This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Hello and welcome to another episode of Do Go On. My name is Dave Warnicky and I'm sitting here with Matt Stewart and Jess Perkins. Does oh. it mean you sound a little disappointed? Oh, no, I thought that sounded nice. Oh, okay. I was trying to give you the uh, the sort of respect your name deserves. Mm. It's oh, no, just... I thought it sounded nice to me. He did sound like it was disrespectful to you. Yeah, right? He yeah. was like, oh, and she's here too. Yeah. I'm here every week, if except I ha- that, if, those two that I missed. If I was disappointed, you'd know about it. <laughs> Jess uh, Perkins. <laughs> Hi. That's, con- that's a little confusing because my middle name is... Uh, yeah, I know. It was hard to spell, but my parents found a way. <laughs> yeah. It was asterisk, psi yeah. asterisk. Is that <laughs> the nurse is writing down the name on the birth certificate? What should we call her, Jess? Ugh, <sighs> Perkins. I, said, I love it. Where's it? What ethnicity is that? It's quite original. It. Yeah. That's quite oh, original. Pretty. And now here it's I am. It's a family name. <laughs> her nana was like. <laughs> 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 Lovely lady. Lovely oh, lady. Fantastic oh, yeah. woman. Very entertaining. <laughs> oh, yeah. How is everyone? I'm pretty good. Dave? Honest answer. No. Oh. Podcast answer. Podcast oh, answer, I gave please. A podcast oh, answer. I'm fantastic. Okay, great. Yeah, great. No, I've just got a little bit of a cold. So oh. that's, my, that's, that's my real. That's a bit crook too. Did I give it to you? Maybe. Was this from our makeout sesh? Yeah. Ever since we started making out <laughs> after we recorded episodes of Book Cheat, which was last night, that was our first ever Book Cheat yeah. post makeout, and I felt sick ever since. I had a migraine In my soul. today. Which one of you gave that to me? Um, well, who have you been making out with most recently? Oh, most recently? Yeah. Well, Dave was late today, yeah. so <laughs> oh, <laughs> mad. Yeah. God, you snooze and loose had, in this I industry. I had butted you during it. Yeah, you and did. That's, yeah, that's result. Is that what a migraine is? Yeah, migraines are when you get head butted. They're head traumas. Right. Yeah, fact. You learn a lot. Yeah, you do. Anyway, so we're all feeling great. Yeah, feeling great, feeling <laughs> bloody Great. Well, I've got a hell of a report for you today. I'm going to put myself out there and say that. Is that a clue? That. Is it about the devil? Is it about hell? Is yeah. it about um, Hell's Kitchen? Is it about Gordon Ramsay? Yes. Oh, I got to leave one. There you go. Gordon Ramsay? He didn't even ask the question. That wouldn't be that bad. I don't, I don't really know much. He sort of just appeared on the scene one day, in my, in my life anyway. Yeah. Suddenly he was I think just he was like a mid-level famous. soccer player. Like, you think he was a semi-pro soccer player, maybe? Is this true? I don't I know. Think, I think so. Oh, no I mean, It's way. way more interesting than I actually thought it ever would be. <laughs> He yeah, wasn't, was he? I think he was. Have I made that up? I can't wait for a uh, redaction at the end of the episode. <laughs> oh, a la last week. Oh, my God. The meltdown David Warnicky Must had. say it was quite amazing, I guess, to see no. how many people. It was just interesting, I should say, to see how many people listen all the way through to the episode. <laughs> how many people clearly don't bother listening to the second half of the episode because last week I made a, let's, a grievous mistake. <laughs> My goodness. A I mortal sin to confuse Fibonacci with uh, Archimedes. And I had to make a redaction at the end of the episode, some of which people have never heard. So if you haven't, I did realise. I did realise, okay? Just sadly we had uh, done the whole episode. That's okay. You figured it out, though. You did. And I'm just clarifying that Gordon Ramsay does have some kind of football history. Right. I was thinking Matt was confusing with Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> <laughs> a mid-level the soccer player. Sh- chef. <laughs> <laughs> He's great. He invented the flambe technique. Yeah. yeah, which is doing good things. Yeah, that's great. Thing. Flambe is taking off around the world. Mm, mm. So the way this show works, am I right in saying this? One of the three of us re- reports on a topic that we've researched, usually mm-hmm. been suggested by a listener. So far, so good. This week, Dave's done the research. He's telling the doing the report. It's on a topic that Jess and I don't know. And to get us onto this topic, Dave is going to ask us a question. Matt, you nailed that. That was a uh, succinct copy and paste for the next 300 weeks. Here we go. <laughs> question for you to get us onto this topic. If you had to escape a country ruled by, let's be, let's be honest, a brutal dictatorship, what mode of transport would you use to flee such a country? Submarine. Okay. Oh, Even though they are the them. dumbest. I don't hate them. I think they're very dumb. They're silly. They're a whimsical mode of is transport. Is there any other? I've got to say this. Is there any other mode of transport that you look at and think that's dumb? Blimp. <laughs> okay. Blimp. Even the word is so funny. <laughs> Blimp. I've never thought about that before. Blimp. They're Blimp. so dumb. Blimp. They're a very slow, cumbersome Blimp. plane. Blimp. Just could take a plane. Oh my god! There's a Blimp. thing called a blimp. A blimp. And there was a time that it like it was rivaling planes. Blimp. Yeah. 
Like Blimp. it looked like that might be the one. Dave, have a go. Blimp. 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 You can so say, you gotta go limp to say blimp. Your mouth blimp. looks dumb. Blimp. Thank blimp. you. Blimp. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Matt, do you have it? Well, well what, I guess it's a give you, what country. Can I give you, a cl- give you a clue? Oh, why is he get a clue? Because you've sort of set it up for him nicely. It's halfway between a submarine <gasps> and a blimp. Oh, it's a hover hovercraft. <laughs> What do they call those? Halfway things? between a Look, submarine honest, and Jess, a blimp. This clue's not very good, so don't worry about it. <laughs> I really haven't helped him out that much. Thanks for covering you up your head. It's like twenty five percent submarine, seventy five percent blimp. What do you got? Oh, like an aquaplane. All right, it's ninety. Is it a boat? It's ninety five percent. Are we talking about a car? It's ninety five percent blimp, five percent submarine, but there's a five percent margin of error. So Is it a plane? It's a blimp. Is it a blimp? A zeppelin. It was halfway between a plane and a blimp. A plane and a blimp now. We've talked about it on the show. It's a hot air balloon. It's a hot air balloon. Fuck! Well done, Matt. See, you give him a clue and Matt, he fires on all cylinders. He gets there. Fuck! That that was not a good clue. That was a bad clue. It it sounded fun to me. Half of it between the submarine and a a blimp. But he got a hot air balloon. I guess that is, yeah. I'd want a quick getaway. And from my experience... Hot air balloons, they I mean they take off fairly slowly. That's, but what have you what have I I should have added this. Yes. What have you had to make your own transport? Okay. Would the hot air balloon would that be the one that you think that you'd have the best shot at being able to, to just whip up yourself? No. Is this about the movie up. <laughs> well, close enough. Do you know what I'd be making? You know what I'd make? What would you make? A horse. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Trojan bit of, horse. Bit of a breeding program. Yeah, right. I'd make a horse. Mm. Can't be that hard. It cannot be that hard. How much play doh you got? Oh. None. All, oh. of, all of it. Is that a good stuff? I've got no. all of it because oh, I took it all from that. All right, great. So we use no, all no. of Dave's Play-Doh yeah. and we f- craft a horse out of it. Okay. And then we give it a big hug and mm. we put all of our love into it. It's a magic hug. And then it makes the horse oh, come alive. Do you have a magic hug? Gonna, well, yeah. You, you can... Wow. I did not know. Why'd you do that to a horse? You should have just magic... Don't worry about those antibiotics, baby. I... I'll give you a hug. I always thought the magic hug was more sexy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. I'm not giving you a magic hug. It's like when... How... um. When a mummy and a daddy love each other very much. How do babies get made? Well, yeah. mummy and daddy had a magic hug. Yeah, yeah well, d- daddy ma- gave a magic hug to a horse. And, uh, <laughs> and you came along. <laughs> That's how he bribed me to stop talking about how he had a weird thing with a horse. <laughs> yeah, your cyclops son or whatever is like clippity-clopping. <laughs> cyclops, that's not right. What are they called? Horse man? Man horse. You know what I'm talking about? Centaur. Centaur. <laughs> <laughs> a one-eyed horse man. One- <laughs> centaur slash centaur. Slash Cyclops. All right, today I'm going to tell you all about the East German balloon escape. Oh, wow. Oh. I love this already. So now, East Germany was the the Soviet side? Is that right? That is correct. I'm going to give you a full background Ooh, just in case. Sweet. Love it. But this story uh, or this topic was suggested by Elliot B. from Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, Utah! God's country. So thank you so much, uh, Elliot B. Now, people, if you want to suggest a topic, uh, this is a good example of how to do it. Great. There's a link in the description of this episode. Or you can go to dogoonpod.com. You click that link and you can tell us why we should do that topic. This is Elliot's pitch to us that I picked up on. It's like a combination of those reports on the Arctic balloon guy combined with the Colditz Castle escape. Love that. And I was in. Yeah. Two, two episodes that I've done that I really enjoyed researching, so I was in. This one is the one that I teased last week that went to the Patreons. So uh, it was so, so close. After 300 votes, this one was only winning by two. Whoa. And after about 600 votes, it only won by about 10 overall. So it's very tight. Really tight. Very tight. But I think they've chosen well this week. I wonder who lost. There's something else pretty good. Better was Greg Norman lipping out again. He was so close. Sorry, (laughs) Greggy. A full report on Greg Norman. (laughs) That's why they call him the shark. (laughs) That's a (laughs) two-parter. (laughs) <laughs> why are you Why are you mean to Greg Remember when I tweeted an icon. I tweeted Greg Norman And told him yes. That he should give Jess Hi Jess Because she's a really funny friend of mine He never wrote back Oh okay I That's do why you're you so that. bitter on Greg, yeah, so Greg Me too I didn't get hired Greg It's a great name It is great Greg Norman It's <laughs> great <laughs> And he played golf. Yeah. I love him What? Perfect. And he's a like, shark And now he like he's, he's quite old And he poses nude And he's real buff Sorry what? Have you seen those? Oh, oh, you I've he, seen that. Yeah, he's he's a uh, very very fit man in he the dick. Be, he's got a fit dick. Well, I haven't. I, don't, I think he covers it. He covers his dick with covers a up the wang, but something. you get to see his strong upper thigh. Yeah, he's got my real God. strong buttock and thigh. Yeah, my goodness. Yeah, he could crush a golf ball between his buttocks. I That's my dream could. for when I'm old to crush, crush a, golf. a golf ball between your buttocks. No, well, yeah, <laughs> new goal. I just want to be like a very fit seventy year old. Yeah. You I don't know? know if he's quite. He, oh, maybe he's, he'd be in his sixties. I'd say. 
That's not all. Well, let's find out. Let's get a report. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me tell you. <laughs> I want to report about Greg Norman. Greg Norman. Oh, I've got one for you right now. <clears throat> Arguably the most successful athlete turned businessman in the world. Greg Norman is known as much for his entrepreneurial spirit in the boardroom as his dominance on the golf course. And this is shark.com slash the shark slash biography. <laughs> shark.com. This is an unofficial... I think this is official. Oh, I love that. Shark, he got shark.com. Well done. Not even real sharks, of which he is named after. <laughs> he beat real sharks. Got That's why he's the shark. I mean, I have <laughs> He to... outsharked the shark. It is my turn to do the Patreon bonus episode this month, the report one. Yeah. I haven't picked it yet. Oh, really? It could be a Greg Norman. Oh, I'd love... Patreon people, let me know if you want to hear all about the shark, Greg Norman. <laughs> oh, my God. Dave. That will absolutely piss off the guy that every week has been requesting we do Don Bradman. <laughs> That's Gary J. Gary Gary. Sorry, Gary J. I'm going to do Greg Norman before the dawn. (laughs) All right, let me tell you about the uh, East German balloon escape. Now, we all know World War II was absolutely brutal, to put it lightly. Mm -hmm. Millions dead, millions displaced, uh, countries destroyed, cultures almost wiped out. When Germany surrendered in 1945, the German state no longer existed and authority over the country was handed over to the victorious Allied powers. But Germany lay in ruins. Which I never really, you don't really think about them as much because they've inflicted a lot of damage. But then their country had been uh, bombed to all hell. So this is a quote from Britannica to describe what it was like in 1945. The physical devastation from Allied bombing campaigns and from ground battles was enormous. An estimated one fourth of the country's housing was destroyed or damaged beyond use. And in many cities, the toll exceeded 50%. The end of the war came to be came to be remembered as zero hour, a low point from which virtually everything had to be rebuilt anew from the ground up. Wow. So Germany lay in ruins. Mm. The Allied powers divided Germany into four zones. That's basically the people that won the war. Uh, America, Britain and France were in charge of the western two-thirds of Germany, later known as Western Germany. And uh, so the Soviet Union was given the eastern third, later known as East Germany. Berlin, which was entirely in the eastern zone, was also divided into four, and that's where you get the famous Berlin Wall, which is worthy of a report in itself. Mm. But that's not what we're talking about today. At first, they were all supposed to get along. It wasn't supposed to be two separate countries, but things sharply deteriorated. The countries had a lot of disagreements straight after World War II. The four countries' governments were run differently at home, and opposing social, political, and economic systems began to emerge. Almost immediately, citizens of the eastern side of Germany started legally immigrating to the, immigrating to the western side of Germany. Of course, there is a word in German for this because they have a word for everything, and that is Republikflucht. Uh, Republikflucht, yeah. which translates as desertion from the republic. Republikflucht. Flucht. Republikflucht. Get flucked. I picture the western side as being like rainbows and unicorns and the other side being desolate wasteland. With lots of thunderstorms. Yeah. Yeah. That's sort of how it kind of became, people wanted to get out because it was drab and dreary and it was like... Grey. Grey and Yeah, and lots of communist architecture, yeah. yeah. Communist. But then there was that sort of, uh, that gold ball pointy thing. Did you, have you ever been in Berlin? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the eastern side, they they wanted to... Um, build something to show that they were just as hip and up to date with everything as the West. So they built this big spire thing. And then it, I th- the way I just did a walking tour and the way the guy explained it was there was a reflection on it that they couldn't get rid of no matter what they tried. The sun would always hit it in this spot and they um, tried all these different surfaces and stuff. I miss, This is like from 10 years ago, so I'm misremembering. Uh, and, yeah, they just could never fix that issue. <laughs> And did that thing set fire to half the city? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. The Not again. The sun's coming out behind the clouds. Everyone duck for cover. It's a midday fire. And they're like, just like we like it in the east. <laughs> just like we like it. See, we've got us. They're very proud. Yeah, they'll drink their turnip juice and... <laughs> so, <lots of, laughs> you think you're think trying to reference Shelbyville there? Well, you know, like they, they pretend that that was how they always oh, they wanted to be. Yeah, the, the lemon tree, those cursed lemons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now let's celebrate with a cool glass of mm-hmm. turnip juice. <laughs> cursed democracy. <laughs> so, but, so millions of people started immigrating from the east to the west, but that's all completely illegal after World War II. 
But in 1949, the two halves of Germany split and became their own countries. The Federal Republic of Germany, known as Western Germany, and the German Democratic Republic, known commonly as East Germany. Right. East being the communist side. In West Germany, the government was democratically elected and political life was pretty stable. However, over in East Germany, as in the Soviet Union that ruled it, the government served merely as uh, the, uh, an agent to the all-powerful communist-controlled party. Life was seen as less authoritarian in West Germany, rainbows as Matt is saying, <laughs> so many Germans uh, in the East migrated over. Some estimate that millions of them left. Between October 1945 and June 1946, so less than a year, 1.6 million Germans are thought to have left the Soviet zone for the And did you say that was legal or illegal? So at that time that was legal. Yeah, right. They were like, all right, cool. Come and go. We're going to go over there because they're not telling us what to do. And they're like, okay. And this was a significant problem for the East as many of the immigrants were well, or emigrants were well-educated young people. Yeah, why would you stay? Why would you stay? And that further weakened their state economically. Right, Because they were like, it was one of those classic things where you have a brain drain. You're like, oh, a lot of the people that had great ideas have now gone over there and now... We, we don't have nothing. those people anymore. We don't have young people. We well, just don't got... worry. We're going to build a tower. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'll get them back. We just don't have anyone who knows anything about mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> so in 19- nineteen, just got all these dumb people seeing themselves in reflections and screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Is that me? So in 1952, East Germany, they were absolutely fed up with millions of their people leaving. They were losing everyone. They decided to fortify their border and close it off to people emigrating west, basically locking people in. Jesus. Uh, They'd also tell you it's to keep people out, but really it was to keep people in. A uh, ploughed strip 10 metres wide or 32 feet wide was created along the entire length of the inner German border. And then an adjoining protective strip or the Schuststreifen which was 500 metres or 1,600 feet wide, was placed under tight control and then there was a further five kilometre restricted zone around this. So they created a real bit where you're not allowed to go anymore. Wow. Uh, Residents living in these areas had to be resettled because there were people living on those borders. (laughs) Oh, my God. Thousands of guards patrolled the area and it was suddenly much more difficult to get to the west from the east and they outlawed it as well. They moved people (laughs) closer in. To keep them, like, keep them in. No, you can't live here anymore. We, we need this area for a weird border we've come up with. We need a wall. Your house is now part of the wall. So it was way harder to leave, except in Berlin, which was still half controlled by the West. So what people would do from the because that was inside the eastern side, there's just this little circle of Berlin, which is half Western. So what people would do is they'd just go to Berlin for the day mm. and there was no bo- a wall at that time, so they'd just go over to the Western side, go to the Western airport and just fly anywhere in the oh, world. Oh, shit. And so they could just, you could just leave that way. Right. They Jeez. could still leave. <laughs> Between 1949 and 1961, an estimated 3.5 million East Germans, which was one-sixth of the entire population, emigrated to the West, mostly via this... Berlin Berlin loophole. So that's why they put up the Berlin Wall to cut that off as well. So you know, there's two walls. There's a one along the border and there's one surrounding the uh, western side of Berlin. After 1961, there were a lot less border crossings, so they've slowly cut off all the borders. More world, uh, walls were built, barbed wire was installed, mines were laid. They put down minefields. Oh, that's how serious they were fuck. about this. Guards were increased and given orders to shoot people on side if they started to make a break for it. But this didn't keep everyone in. There were a lot of daring escapes that were made. Children were smuggled out in freezer vans hidden under stuffed pigs' carcasses. Gross. No, thanks. A doctor swam 45 kilometres or 28 miles across the Baltic Sea just to get out. So desperate to leave. So desperate. So you can't even... They can't go to other countries anyway? They they can go to other Soviet-controlled countries. And it's also difficult to live. So you can go to, like, Czechoslovakia for a holiday, but then you can't leave there. Or you can ask very few people who are granted leave passes. And a lot of the time you're expected to come back. But I imagine you're like, well... Isn't it funny to just be like, just make a better country? Yeah, (laughs) make it a better place to live. You're focusing on the wrong thing. All that money you're spending on mines and walls, just make it a nicer place. (laughs) Put in a pool. (laughs) It's like there's (laughs) neighbours having... People living because they want a pool. That's it. First thing I I want on holiday. This guy wants to swim 45 miles to get to a pool. (laughs) There's 
neighbors having a party either side. One party's real cool, <laughs> and the other one sucks. But then they're not allowed to leave it. You stay at this party. I know we've only got dry bread, <laughs> and they've got a pool. But bad luck. You can't, I've locked the door. Your doors are locked. There's You're a chain on that door. You live here now. You'll actually blow up if you try to leave. <laughs> now eat the bread. Enjoy your bread. Another one did that, that same journey, but on a blow-up air mattress, the 45K or 28 miles across the that treacherous better, Baltic. Still on an air mattress. But yeah. I'm swimming. Oh, yeah, no, that sucks. But I'm, I'm thinking on an air mattress, like I must have had some on. kind of, um, what's this? What am I miming oh. here? Thank you. <laughs> paddleboard, stand-up paddleboard. Yeah, if you stand up paddleboard, that makes more sense. <laughs> I saw a sign the other day, it was for the... Uh, stand up paddleboard festival, and then it said the largest stand up paddleboard festival in the southern hemisphere. <laughs> I love it. How many are there? <laughs> I, lo- I love How largest else? in the southern hemisphere. Yeah. How many are there? I've never heard of another one. That's the first I've ever heard of it. Me too. Uh, for me, I guess that could be the largest in the world. No one had questioned it. But we're not even really in that community, you know? When's the last time you went stand up paddleboarding? Oh, I mean, how many days in a fortnight? Yeah, right? Hmm. <laughs> Who knows? Too many. <laughs> Did you read about this escape? Um, it's again, it's a vague memory from when I was in Berlin about a, a car driving through the checkpoint. No, uh, not in this story, but I remember hearing about that so maybe that when I was there. Apparently, yeah. the it was something like they built, like they had a fake, a false back on the on, on the top of the car. Maybe it was built to fall off, so that to, <laughs> and the driver, so they lay down and had a fake person, uh, like a no. dummy. So they could drive through and the checkpoint barrier would knock the top of the car off, but they'd still drive under the barrier. Was that, there was all these genius little things. There was one heartbreaking one where this guy went over the border and he made, he found a woman who looked like his wife. He already had, got, could get in and out. He found a woman that looked a lot like his wife, got her to fall in love with him. Brought her back over the border. No. no. Used her passport to smuggle his actual wife out and left. No. Sounds like a myth, right? But that's, this is what this walking tour guy told us. That's like, that's that's a catfish. <laughs> yeah, that's, oh, that is, how brutal is that? You've also got to have pretty good self-confidence that you think, oh, that woman looks like my wife. I reckon I could get her to fall in love <laughs> with me. Well, I've done it once. <laughs> done it. What if you meet her and she's like, I'm already happily married. No, you're not. You're not now. It's going to ruin that marriage as well. Yeah, it's a lot of work. And then. Trapper. I'm going to start thinking that, just walking along the street as I see people, <laughs> just thinking, could I make you fall in love with me? Make, too. Make yeah, is yeah. the best word there. Well, that's the only way you get people to love you, isn't yeah. it? You make, make them. <coughs> Hold them down. Love, love me. me. Love me. <laughs> I'm giving you a special hug. Love me. <laughs> special or, hug. me. I don't want a special hug. Okay, I won't if you love me. Love me. <laughs> Jess is just yelling at horses later. Uh, love me. I just want people to love me. <laughs> Got to find a horse that looks a lot like my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, she looks like a horse. Oh, yeah. She leaves the horse behind. People are like, oh, Mary, is that you? <laughs> that's a that's a wild story. Yeah, I mean, it's one yeah. of the ones that I hope it's true, but that I also don't want it yeah, to be true. Exactly. Totally, oh, totally. I don't know, that poor lady. I don't hope it's true. <laughs> you fucking monster! Why would you hope it's true? <laughs> because like it, that is an, a historically an amazing story. Yeah, basically, so Matt could do a full report on it because it's awesome. Sure. All right, so lots of people tried to uh, cross over this border. The most famous escaped attempt over the east-west border, excluding these a lot of famous Berlin ones, was the East German balloon escape, the real subject of today's episode. Ah, uh, yes. We got so to that was the, uh, Well, that was yes. the historical background there. So a bit of information as to why these people would be so desperate to leave. And thank you for that, um, for that information too, though, because I hadn't – I don't think I've thought much about – obviously I knew – East and West and the significance of the Berlin Wall coming down, but, like, I'd never properly thought about why that happened or the conditions for people. Like, it's horrendous. Yeah, and the other, another big tragic part of it is that a lot of families were split up yeah. a lot of the time. So, they, you know, during this period where you could just walk across the border and no one cared and then suddenly the, the these barriers go up, you're on one side, your family's on the other, or, you know, you've been displaced because of the war. Yeah. People that used to be able to just go and, you know, Visit you can't, can't visit them. Anymore. Yeah, so it's, people didn't see their family for yeah. decades. A long, long time. It, it's insane. So the two main players in this story are Peter Strelzik. 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 I never said it out loud. Peter Strelzik, a thirty-seven-year-old electrician and former East German Air Force mechanic. Okay. And Gunther Wetzel. 
Gunther Wetzel. Probably Gunther Wetzel. That's a fantastic Gunther name. Wetzel. Gunther Wetzel. A 24-year-old former bricklayer. Okay, a couple of tradies. So Peter Str- Strelzik and Gunther Wetzel. Peter being the older one, Gunther being the younger one. Jeez, Gunther's name just made me instantly hungry for a big old pretzel. Oh, man, I'm always hungry for a pretzel. pretzel. There's a so there's a a a shop on Chapel Street now called Pretzel, and you'll never guess what they sell. Is that the one that everything's hot pink in there? Yes, everything is hot. It is. Well, it's not hot pink. It's more like a peach pink, Dave. Jesus Christ! It's kind of overwhelming to look. It is quite overwhelming. I looked away. Also, more importantly. Uh, they're within my Uber Eats oh. <laughs> radar. Really? So I can just get fucking pretzels brought to me. That's it pretty is fu- pretty fast. I it know. Was soggy by the time I got to you. No, nah, it's still good. And it only what only doubles the price with delivery. Yeah, it's they're expensive pretzels to begin with. Right. Someone's got to pay for that uh, pink paint. Yes, you're right. Oh, anyway, I got to get on that Triple J money where you can just order pretzels across yeah. town. Yeah, get on that tri- ABC <laughs> money. Famously One shift good cash. a week. <laughs> Real good uh, cash. Damn it. What are you making? Three, four million a year? How do uh, we get on that gravy train? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Hey, our tax dollars have paid for those pretzels, <laughs> so you enjoy them. Yeah, I do. Thank you. Yeah, that's what that was the point of me bringing it up. <laughs> to thank to thank the nation. Some, one time I got two. I got a salt one and then I got a cinnamon one. Oh, two meals. It was so fucking good. You could do three course meals. That was a lunch. You, <laughs> you know? get a garlic for entree. Of course. Then you get your salt, classic, classic, main. and then yeah, cinnamon dessert. Yum, yum, yum. De- give me some dense bread, please. Yeah. Three, please. <laughs> I don't want to shit anymore. <laughs> I'm done shitting. <laughs> Thanks to have a meal deal called that. <laughs> the I don't want to shit anymore. Three pretzels for the price of two. <laughs> sorry. Just... All right. So we are one sentence in here. <laughs> so sorry. Peter and Gunther. That's what I'm trying to tell you about. Ah, Gunther's uh, made me just want a pretzel. <laughs> <laughs> what is a pretzel? <laughs> Uh, the two men worked at a plastics factory near Posneck in East Germany. Like many of the 17 million who were trapped in East Germany at the time, they dreamt of escape. These dreamers, common as they were, had to be careful who they confided, confided in, as it was possible their ambitions could be reported to the secret police. Confided? Oh. Sounds German. Yeah. You used to doing it with the yeah, the German accent? Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The secret police, the dreaded Stasi. Stasi. Oh, I used to wear Stasi pants when I was younger. <laughs> they were so cool. They were cool. Then the Berlin Wall came down. <laughs> and, and so uh, did the big baggy pants. <laughs> yeah, God. Full of secrets. They're all declassified. <laughs> Feel kind of bad Check now. the back pocket. <laughs> declassified my pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not Stussy. <laughs> Uh, A lot of people wanted to leave East Germany for financial reasons. People in West Germany were generally much better off. The younger man in our duo, Gunther, resented the limitation on jobs that the dictatorship imposed on its people Mm. and refused to join the Communist Party just to get ahead in life. He later wrote, quote, Life in East Germany was far from satisfactory for us. There was a whole list of things we found objectionable because we had to put up with and factor in so many constraints. Fundamental reasons were that it was not possible either publicly or in one's private circle to voice one's opinion because one could never be certain whether one or even several persons present were police informers. You couldn't even oh. trust your friends. No, like wow. this podcast, for example. Oh, yeah, you definitely wouldn't do a podcast, <laughs> would you? You know what I think. You know what I bloody reckon. Hey, yeah. And put Communist that out. party's into- great. <laughs> yeah. huh? Three cheers for Stussy. <laughs> yeah, I think... Um, <laughs> It is. It's funny how uh, real, full-on, evil governments make people feel real paranoid. Really Isn't that weird. It's so paranoid. weird, huh? It's weird. It's one of those weird side effects. But is our- that what you're telling us? This, this, these guys are governed by a pretty uh, bad, a bad type. Pr- pretty bad. Who is? Who's the big boss? Well, it started out with like Stalin and all that sort of thing, and then continued on. All oh, right. This is Lenin and a Stalin and a whatever. Is that what that was? We yeah, well, this is post World War Two, right? Oh yes, yeah, of course. So- I knew that. I know all that. Yeah, yeah, Stalin. yeah. Sure, sure. I watched the Death of Stalin. He's got an English accent. I know it. I got yeah, yeah, it. exactly. <laughs> so they were, they were. You'd never be certain who you could talk to. But these two guys, Peter and Gunther, worked together for four years. They struck up a friendship and confided in each other. Eventually, that they wanted to escape East Germany. 
it soon became all they talked about. They brainstormed ideas as to how to get over the border, one of which was, was to build a helicopter and just fly over it. Build a helicopter. Yeah. Uh, they gave up when they realised they couldn't get their hands on an engine big enough. That was the only fault. To build a helicopter. Well, they're what pretty handy guy, guys. Oh, actually, one, did one of them... What, what was... was in the German East German Air Force. Air Force, okay, And yes. a mechanic as well. All so right. you think that he knows yeah. where around. And the other guy, Bricklayer? Bricklayer. I want, I want to see a brick helicopter. Brick. <laughs> get yes. it up there. Sometimes that's why they needed a big engine. <laughs> sometimes in these kind of stories, I basically project my own knowledge base onto people. So I'm like, "What How the fuck a, do they a know person? about? <laughs> what do they know about helicopters?" It's like he was in the air force. Yeah. Ah, he might know a bit mm. then. Because in my head, I'm like, I don't know anything about that. Therefore, no one does. But can he name all the Kardashian and Jenner sisters? I don't think so. Fuck, I think I can. Yeah. Kim, Crystal. No. Nah. No. Damn. <laughs> They're all K names, though, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, surely there's a crystal. No, there's a Chloe. They went with Courtney, Courtney. with a K. Chloe with a K. Courtney with a K. They went, they went with Kendall. Kylie. They went, Ka- they went Kendall like before they went Crystal. I like how they've committed to the joke. Mm. It's a bit well, there's a... also a brother, Rob. Is Kardashian with a K as well? Yeah. Is that why they like to be KK? So you got KKK, I guess, with the three sisters. Huh. What are they trying to tell us? <laughs> <laughs> So they've given up on the helicopter. <laughs> yeah, which they do know something about. Eventually they happened upon the idea that maybe they could just fly over the border, not in a helicopter or on a plane, but in a homemade hot air balloon. There is debate as to who came up with the idea, as both men would later claim to have thought of it first. Of course. And then told the other one. That means they... That means they... <laughs> it's like us and the name do go on. <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, I'm sure history will show. How? How will history show? The notes section on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> Irrefutable How, <laughs> evidence. I think what actually happened was you gave me a list and I picked out Duke on from it is what I think happened. But I also but that's maintained... All, that's, that, 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 you were a big part of that. Yeah, you came you made up with it. it. So you came up with it. I just, you I made just it gave so the you the show, confidence. You made it so the show wasn't called It Starts With A Question. Yeah, you had some God. bad ideas. Oh, have I revealed them before? There's some, there's some shockers. What was the best decision, though, early on with the podcast? What was the best call that you made at uh, the two of you? We're the blue and yellow colour scheme on yeah, the logo. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> we didn't realise how long-lasting that would be. <laughs> but yeah. honestly, years later, I'm like... It's still there. We did it. That's lasted longer than... We did it. Well, not you and me, Dave. We've been there since the start. That's right. And then came the colours. And then, you know, there was other bits and pieces along the way, but... You got an email address. <laughs> so. yeah. Too many to mention. Too many Made a Facebook pieces. page. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, but fuck both of you. This wouldn't work without the yellow and blue. <laughs> it's the one key to our success. Yeah. The chemistry of the yellow and blue working together. <laughs> oh, yeah, and Jess, looking at your face, are you wanting us to <laughs> say you? I guess you're important in some ways as well. All right, so this I, I could easily see the colours yellow and blue sitting in that chair very Because I'm wearing green. Well, there you go. That's yellow and blue together is what you're saying, I guess. <laughs> yeah. You oh. guys are yellow and blue, and I'm that sweet green. You're the Venn diagram middle section. Yes. Nice. It's kind nice. of true in a lot of ways. Anyway, Dave, do go on. So they debate as to who came up with the idea, and um, we'll talk about their relationship as time goes by. But Peter, oh. the older man. Was it sexy? Oh, sadly special not. Special hugs. Oh. Magic no, hugs. hugs. <laughs> Just angry hugs. Oh. Uh, Peter, the older man, claimed the idea was inspired by a, t- a TV show he saw on Hot Air Balloons. Gunter, however, maintains that he proposed the idea after, by sheer chance, his wife Petra, her sister, who had already left East Germany in 1958 and was out by this time, came to visit. So sometimes people could come and visit. She brought with her a newspaper in which the annual International Balloon Fiesta in Albuquerque, USA, was reported. Wow. Love how specific that is. It included photos of hot air balloons, and that's where he, the idea struck his mind. That's a weird thing for German newspapers to be reporting on. Yeah. You know? Surely there's more important things, like that glean off the new tower. Yeah. How do we fix it? <laughs> Twelve killed by glean. <laughs> I've looked I've looked it up and I can't find anything about them struggling to get the glean off. It is famous though. The tower's called the how do you say that, Dave? Oh, sorry, I gotta get close to my face. <laughs> the Berliner Fernsehturm. Yeah. Aka okay, the television tower. It's uh, it's cool looking, and it does have like it's got a famous glean that hits it, which is nicknamed Pope's Revenge, because that's great. According to a, a little website called Wikipedia, it says when the sun shines on the Fernschen turns tiled stainless steel dome, 
The reflection usually appears in the form of a cross. Berliners nicknamed the luminous cross Rach des Papstes, or the Pope's Revenge. For the same reasons, the structure was also called St. Walter. U.S. President Ronald Reagan mentioned this in his Tear Down the Wall speech on the 12th of June, 1987. I hadn't read through that paragraph and <laughs> sort of faded out on what was relevant <laughs> to what we were doing. <laughs> So they both claim the idea. Gunter still maintains a we- maintains a website about the duo's exploits, and he really tries to sell that he was the one who thought up the idea. Wait, what? Oh, cool. Gunter's still alive. Yeah, maintaining a website. Wow. There's something in my head is like, wait, what? A guy from this story maintains yeah. a website? How? <laughs> He's a, he also paints himself in a pretty good light. This is from his website, balloonflucked.de. The balloon's fucked. (laughs) I fucked the balloon, not the other guy. Oh, I get it. He said, this is him, quote, I immediately told Peter Streslick about my idea. I remember the day we made this decision very well as it was the 7th of March, 1978, one day before International Women's Day, which was actively celebrated in East Germany, end quote. (laughs) Just trying to make him sound like a real ally. Uh, Yeah. I don't know that it was. Was it? Well, communism, communism all about everyone's even. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you wouldn't put women up ahead on one day, would you? It should be people yeah, day. Yeah, people day every day. <laughs> you, huh? so- you sound like everyone on the text line on International <laughs> Women's Day um, when actually... we only put female presenters on. It's really fun. <laughs> um. <laughs> Triple J <laughs> listeners, are, what are you saying? They're not. They're, they're... great. They're the best. <laughs> Uh, whoever thought up the idea, both men agreed that if they were to go for it, it, would be, it wouldn't be just the two of them. They'd have to build the balloon large enough to carry them, their wives, and their four children who were aged between 2 and 15. And their livestock. <laughs> yeah. and, and their the, houses. the refrigerator. It's okay, but they can just dangle the, um, yeah, the, dang, dangle the barbecue, stove. the stove <laughs> underneath <laughs> them. <laughs> that was the most outrageous. Been done before. Yeah. It's the most outrageous part about the Arctic balloon story. If you that was heard so that dumb. Dangling. Dangling a barbecue. How do we cook food? Let's just take a barbecue with us. Yeah, obviously, you just have to parachute down to it um, <laughs> uh, with your tongs and, you know, you flip a few fly, bits. Yeah, fry up some meat and then, and uh, then climb gotta, back up. Uh, yeah, then you go, obviously. Yeah, you got to parachute back up. You got a rocket, you got a rocket pack <laughs> back up. Um, <laughs> so you're going to have to get good at these skills before we take off. But um, <laughs> so yeah. six, You've six, got a week, so. Yeah. yeah, six to seven hours later, you got toast, so. Yeah. Um, so you also need to uh, invent a rocket ship, um, <laughs> rocket pack. I call it rocket ship uh, in a backpack, but uh, you can shorten that to rocket pack if you want. No, I thought up this idea on International Women's Day, <laughs> yeah, which I respect a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I actually believe in women. I think they exist. <laughs> um, I haven't seen one, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I'm I've very heard, confident that I've, they do exist. I've heard uh, legends and, you know, I like to believe a few conspiracies. Um, and also uh, can petrol gas melt a building. I don't know if it can. <laughs> I reckon women can exist. Yeah. I haven't looked into either, to be honest. <laughs> but i got a funny feeling. <laughs> so once both men agreed that that was their plan, they had to break it to their wives and children and convince them that the journey would be A, possible, and B, safe for everyone in the family. Great. They're two, <laughs> they're two of the things that I'd want ticked off first. Possible. <laughs> That's a big one. <laughs> safe. Also pretty big. I'd go the other way around. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm all about safety. Safety first. Safety first. Yep. You possibility second. Yeah. Oh, as long as it's safe. doesn't matter if it's possible to me. Because <laughs> if it's not possible, then you're safe because you haven't done it. Yeah, great. Fine. All right, so we'll tick that one off. Now let's get on a possible. I put seatbelts on everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're not attached to anything, though. You're just wearing <laughs> sashes all safety the time. Safety first. <laughs> Why do all your sashes say best person on them? That's my seatbelt. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Why do you constantly have whiplash? <laughs> Just attached to everything. Yeah, but safely. Yeah, safely. Safely. I'm attached. harnessed into life. <laughs> yeah. This is again from Gunter's website talking about breaking into their families. We presented our ideas very convincingly and objectively because both my wife Petra and Peter's wife Doris agreed to them. Doris! Oh, great. They Doris must... is great. Petra's great. Doris oh, and I Petra. Love that. Petra, petrified. Exactly. Hopefully not. Oh, hopefully hopefully, not. She's hopefully calm. she has a nice trip. Hey, nice because cool it's trip. A, safe, yep. B, possible. Or the other way around. <laughs> no, you had it right. A, safe. Safe. A, safe. Tick, tick. B, possible. C, bit of bloody fun. Bit of fun. <laughs> yeah. Can't we have all three? That's all I want. So that's the trifecta. That's a bonus. What do you yes. get the man who's got everything? All of the above. <laughs> bit of fun. <laughs> you get him a bit of fun. 
<laughs> That's voucher to SeaWorld. You just slot a voucher to SeaWorld across there. There you there go. You go. Enjoy that. Yeah, enjoy yeah. some. Fun. That's good for use uh, between now and the end of June. So <laughs> get just on. Get, make your plans. It expires in three weeks. I got it for my birthday yeah. four years ago. Yeah, so. so you can organize an RDO from work. I'd, yeah. I'd get on it. Uh, but I'll promise you one thing. It is possible. <laughs> it is safe. It is A, possible. <laughs> and and it be. is B, relatively safe. For everyone except that giant killer whale. <laughs> oh, there is a giant killer whale on the loose? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's unsafe for him. <laughs> So they got to work uh, coming up with a design. They were both pretty handy guys, electrician and mechanic and bricklayer. Probably more, better the electrician and mechanic. Anyway, but neither had uh, ever made a hot air balloon before. Funny about that. Hmm. They didn't have any plans to base their design on. Much like last week, uh, they just kind of guessed based on a few photos that they'd seen. I love, I love this. <laughs> last week, yeah, the guy climbing a mountain based on a label of a of a biscuit tin. I found tin. what I think was the label on a as a can of meat and veggies. I posted it on I our social it. media. It and is it is so sketchy, like squinting at it to be like, is that even a man? <laughs> I could have drawn one without ever seeing it, and it would have been just as valuable. <laughs> I can draw a mountain. It's like a triangle. Yeah. Basically a triangle. So these guys had seen... I, I just can't see. Where's the huge words spelling out meat and veg? <laughs> can't see it. Where are they? Because we were huh? just going to go underneath that bit. <laughs> Potassium, where is it? <laughs> um, so they're just looking at a photo going, I reckon I can make that. The formulas necessary to calculate the balloon's dimensions were taken from the reference book's Brockhouse Physics Lexicon and the handbook a Syllabus for Gas Engineers, just in case you too want to design your own balloon at home. Oh, and I do. Uh, they calculated the weight of the passengers and the craft itself to be around 750 kilos or 1,650 pounds. Based on the photos, they decided that the balloon would need to be 1,800 square metres in total. So quite big. Sorry, uh, sorry 1,800 cubic metres. Okay. I will talk about the actual dimensions from uh, Thank you. from the ground up. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. We don't want another incident where you have to yell at the end of the episode. <laughs> Jim! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Jim! <laughs> you went, did we finished recording, you went to the bathroom, Matt and I were having a chat and we just heard, oh, no! My and belt. I thought someone had broken in and you were in trouble. <laughs> That'd be a great reaction of someone oh, you know, no. coming at you. Oh no! <laughs> hey, I uh, an le- intruder leaving the studio last night. I just had a weird feeling. I recorded book sheet with Matt and Cass last night, which has just come out this week. Yesterday, Tale of Two Cities Part Two. Anyway, it was a lot of fun. I had to stay around to uh, mix the episode down, so I left late at night on my own. And I was thinking, walking about to open the front door, I got a weird feeling. But I open the door and there's just like a guy absolutely losing it out the front, kicking cars, yelling in the street, and I just quietly <laughs> close the door and walk back upstairs and just watch this guy for about five minutes. There's a dog that barks across the street yes. here. He was yelling, what do you got, dog? What do you fucking got? What do you got, dog? Yeah. It was, Did the uh, dog have anything? It, well, he just kept going, rawr, rawr, rawr. is that all you got? <laughs> huh? I say it to my face. <laughs> That's yes. okay. That's just, odd. A, it was strange. And um, he went around the corner and I gave it a couple more minutes just in case it got to my car and drove away very fast. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a bit scary and weird. Uh, after a bit of uh, trial and error, they worked out the shape that the strips of fabric would need to be if they were to create their own balloon. They ran into their first problem and that was that they needed a lot of material. Yeah. The town they live in was quite small and only had about 20,000 inhabitants, and they were worried that acquiring a lot of material might tip off the authorities. Yeah. Because remember, everyone's always dobbing on each other. Yeah. What do you need all that material what do you need for? Oh, oh, I'm building a big dress. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I really like MC Hammer. Yeah. I reckon you just got to go to a lot of different Lynn crafts. Oh, Like yeah, a smart. lot. <laughs> Every Lynn craft in East Germany, which is none. Ah, uh, okay. What do they got? Spotlight? Yeah. They got spotlight? They got 600 spotlights. All right. Oh, well, yeah, great. Yeah, if I just go to every spotlight in Germany, I don't think no one's looking twice because that's just my normal week. Yeah, like, I do that every week. I do every week. I go to every I say, hello, in me again. Me again. Could I get another roll of, of, <laughs> of in your uh, hot pink slash peach pink? Yeah, no. Nice. There is no difference. There's a fucking difference, you psycho. It's not a hot pink. I pointed at a colour and said, that's orange. And my girlfriend said, that's copper. And I was like, what? That's, <laughs> that's a cop out. That's a cop out. That's what that is. That's a pretty different colour, I assume. 
<laughs> Based on the way she yeah. said it. <laughs> she said it like Dave's an idiot. So if Dave's an yeah. idiot, we're definitely yeah, idiots. Yeah. Oh, I was I was definitely wrong. Yeah. I was like, huh. Copper's yeah. like a brown orange, right? Yeah. I'm it looks not... like is it like copper the metal? Yeah. Yeah. All right, now I'm getting it. Now you're getting it. What's the color of a ten cent piece? Copper. No, that's not true, is it? Silver. Silver. What's the color of a two cent piece? It's copper. probably what they used to say, but yeah. now you can't do that one anymore. Can't it... do it. I still do. It's fun. <laughs> After I a... saw someone <laughs> post today. Someone, I can't remember the relevant. Dane Simpson posted some joke about a policeman and someone commented, I used to sing uh, two songs after I had a few drinks. One of them was uh, We're Going Home in the Back of the Divity Van. And the other one was What's the Colour of a Two Cent Piece? Copper. That was the whole comment. I'm like, what? Was it relevant uh, at all? I guess sort of. I think we, Dane said something about police. Okay. And then this person just decided to jump. Was it you that commented? No. <laughs> I'm going to go check. Anyway, sorry, Dave. Do go on. It just sent me back. I'm like, I don't know how Matt, you got here. I've already said do go on. Oh. I thought you were talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> Do go on about the coppa. <laughs> so they're worried about tipping off authorities if they buy Heaps every of bit material. of material in town. Yeah. Oh. So they visited neighbouring towns, but they couldn't find what they wanted. Finally, they travelled 50 kilometres or 31 miles to a place called Gira where they purchased one metre or three by three metre wide rolls of cotton cloth totalling 850 metres or yeah, 850 metres Whoa, in length. That's a lot. Nearly 3,000 feet at a department store. That's so funny. No, nah, not nothing sus. What I hope is that they had to they had to sneak out into West Germany to get it and then sneak it back in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll never get that in the east. It's better go out west. Yeah. I know. I know, oh, I know I'll go. Hey, let's take the, the wives and kids just yeah. for like a day trip. Yeah. <laughs> I know a tunnel. <laughs> Great haberdashers out there. Yeah. Oh, man, oh my the I haberdashers. I would not wear a suit made in East Germany. Oh, my God, I'd rather go naked. <laughs> and I have. I'm naked right now. Naked right now. Yeah, As I you know, can tell. I know. <laughs> I'm in the room with you. So they bought 850 metres off of Haberdash. cotton cloth. Yep. The shop manager was astounded by the quantity, but the men told him they needed the material to line tents as at their local camping club, which much must have satisfied him because he never snitched on them. Ah. Uh. We are building 6,000 tents. And he's like, huh, say no more. <laughs> Great. It's for the cause. So now they have their material. The cont- Irish band, the cause. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they all need a tent. There's heaps of them. They've all got big Irish families. Well, one. Uh, Gunter got to work on stitching it together. This is all the material. To do so, he used his mother-in-law's 40-year-old uh, Gritzner, which was a... Uh, a sewing machine, which despite its age was very reliable. Yeah, they don't build them like they used to. They don't. They bloody don't. They do not. I was very bad. We had to learn how to sew in high school because I went to a girls' school and that's um. Yeah, you went to a girls' school, what, in do. the Depression? We did not do any kind of woodwork or metalwork. I or did woodwork. Like well, My no, teacher's we... name was Mr. Chalk. We learned to sew. <laughs> Come on, mate. Pick, it. pick the right trade. <laughs> Maybe oh. to chalk work. Come on. Yeah, come on. Do chalk work. <laughs> But I used to, there was like this teacher's assistant in the class that would help us all with like the sewing machine stuff. And I would always go, could you just show me again how to how to do that particular stitch? And then she'd just do a section of it. And I would do that every class until oh, she smart. basically made it for me. That is really That's smart. That's really <laughs> smart. Well done. I had to do one semester of textiles, mm-hmm. which was basically sewing things together. Yeah. And um, that is the only subject I nearly failed at high school. Really? I cannot tell you how bad I was. I, I got a it. pass. Any practical of, skills? Yeah, oh, I got a pass out of absolute pity. When they eventually t- change schools to be more practical, kids like you are not going to make it. Yeah, you're fucked. I don't need to go back to school. I've already got my diploma. They can't take it back. <laughs> I think they can. Can they? Under the new regime. Yeah, you're fucked. What? What school? Why textile? Why didn't I ever get to do textiles? Or did I? Surely, at some point. I don't remember. Anyway, so they, they're using the old trusty sewing Yeah, the Gritzner. To ensure the sturdiness of the craft, Gunter used a double stitch normally used for leather. Right. So he's sewing the shit out of it. Yeah. Oh, they should have used leather. Imagine a big oh, old leather yeah. balloon. Don't worry, I'm uh That'll look real hot. Style. Yeah, you go to the department store, you say, I'm, uh, I've just joined a bikey game. Yeah. <laughs> My whole crew needs leather We're jackets. We're all making jackets. It's our first, uh, like, ah. first activity together. Wasn't like the idea that the guy's like, I didn't even ask. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. 
don't, I don't, Mate, I just saw a big sale and went, great. Yeah, isn't that funny? Like the idea that they dob them in. Yeah. Mate, if you got any more of this business. Yeah. Come to us, please. Yeah. Or like they're buying leather and the guy's like, oh, I'm into... I mean, weird sex stuff. Yeah. I was like, oh, I didn't need I to did know. Not, no, I did not. Did not need to know that. Just take the leather and go. Honestly, it's real weird. Let me tell you about it. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you everything I'm going to do. <laughs> tell you what I've, I've I like. I've backstory. Please, yeah. let me tell Please, it. Please, come on. It's weird. It took me a while to think of all this. I've researched a lot. I've had to sleep with a lot of people clad in leather to work out Don't what I need to say. kink shame my made-up kink. Yes. yes. My imaginary friend, which is me, is feeling very embarrassed right now. <laughs> So the two men kept their mission secret for months, not speaking about it to anyone except each other and their families. Except when a family friend visited Gunther from West Germany. Oh. Gunther again writes. So I think the deal is that West West Germans could come into East Germany, but East Germany couldn't leave. That's yes, so... which is, I think, how that woman got yeah, done. Yeah, so that's how that woman would have been trapped in Berlin. Yeah. That's so fucked. Yeah, it's no good. Uh, this is Gunter writing again on his website, which just I will of an link. Imaginary line that just happened to be we picked this side. You know what what I mean? if he went and asked for her passport? Oh, and then when he and his wife come back the through, passport back. They just, he just gives her her passport back. Yeah. Why did he have to leave her in there? Yeah, because then he's got to have two wives, and that's messy. It's easier to just <laughs> leave her in a communist dictatorship. No, she could have stayed in West. She could have just. She could have stayed solid. at home. He could have just won her trust and explained what he needed, borrowed her passport for a week, gone and got his wife, come back, given <laughs> yeah, her back her passport. That does make sense, right? I mean, no who would problem. trust that someone would give you your passport back? So, Yeah, but he could have stolen it. Like if, if Oh, yeah, steal it. If she was basically if she was ready to trust him for like in a relationship like that. Just steal her passport. Probably could have found a way to steal it. Yeah. And then bring it back and be like, oh, my God, this is so embarrassing. I thought I was picking up my passport and I picked up yours out of that locked box in your cupboard. Yeah, and then once she's through, she'd be able to get a new passport in West Germany, right? This sounds like a maths problem. You got a hen. Yeah, the pig. You got a pig and a fox. <laughs> you can't leave them all alone. You and a bag go- of grain. Yeah. <laughs> There's no pig. I've added the pig. I was going to say, what does the, what, what the pig eat? <laughs> Pig's there for company. <laughs> <laughs> Pigs just like to hang out, okay? Yeah, right. <laughs> right, the yeah. pig's one's making the decisions. <laughs> you are a pig. You're the pig, Dave. <laughs> oh, no, I've been the pig all along. <laughs> pig boy. This is Gunter again writing about why he would tell his friend visiting from West Germany. We were relatively certain that the Stasi, which is the secret police, would not bust us, but it was not something we could completely rule out either. Anyone who lived in East Germany can understand what would then happen. We would have been locked up and no one from our circle of friends or family would have any idea what had become of us. Wow. So he basically disappeared. Ugh. So they told their family friend, gave him two photos of the balloon being made in Gunther's lounge room with the plan that if they were to suddenly disappear, the authorities in West Germany would be, could be informed and mm-hmm. maybe they could do a bit of diplomacy on their behalf right. to try and get him freed. That's pretty unlikely, to be honest, but there's at least some evidence that that, that's why they've been uh, locked up. Yeah. So he continued on. He finished the balloon, and all in all, this is the measurements, it measured 15 metres, 49 feet wide, and 20 metres or 66 feet tall. So it was huge. huge. 20 metre tall balloon. Does it need to be that big? (laughs) Yeah, it does have to because they want to have... Uh, it's going to be 700, oh, of the fridge, 750 the kilos house. plus the house. Plus he's a bricklayer. He's got to bring his tools. He's <laughs> lifetime supply. <laughs> I've got 20,000 bricks back there. One of his kids is a real big reader. So all oh, the books yeah. are coming. Oh, Do you reckon no. you could get a balloon that big at Lombard's The Paper People? <laughs> Do you think you could? I mean, at Lombard's The Paper People? But a, what, a paper balloon? <laughs> Do they sell balloons? Yes, that's where I got our 100 balloons. Oh, it's just as Lombard's asked you to sponsor this episode secretly. <laughs> Who? Lombard's the paper people. You mentioned <laughs> Lombard's Spotlight. Lombard's the paper people. Lombard's. And they're balloon specialists. They're party p- specialists. Here we go. Jess All of your the, party needs. Jess the knows paper a people too are much. party specialists. Well, they have paper too. She knows a little too much. She's like she's reading copy. Yeah. Are you get, is it getting a little kickback on the side? No, yeah. I was just wondering if you could get amongst their massive range of balloons. <laughs> if they had balloons. And low, low prices. <laughs> My goodness, you won't believe it. Name a theme for a party. Name a possible theme you could have for a party. Uh, uh, gingivitis. They've got it. <laughs> <laughs> gingivitis party, they've got you covered. Jeez, that is well. well they've, really got, they've won me over. They've got you there. <laughs> Balloons, party hats, 
bunting, uh, cups, paper plates, costumes. They've right. got it all. At Lombards, the paper people. They, why are they called the party people? Maybe they are. Maybe I'm misremembering. Oh, Jess, look at the ad copy. They email it to all of us. <laughs> this has been a seamless <laughs> ad. Got to read out the highlighted sections. <laughs> Lombards. Hang on. Oh, no. No. <laughs> and now a word from our sponsors. <laughs> The paper people, thank you very much. They're a party goods supplier. Lombards. They have fucked up their marketing. The paper people. Why are you calling yourselves paper people if you're party people? That just makes me assume they just got why lots are you of paper. Only, why are you putting them in one box? Well, they have done it. They put them you in a paper are. box. Maybe they've got paper bunting, paper plates, paper party goods at Lombards. The paper people. Dave, do go on. <laughs> Uh, the cloth, they've got the balloon bit, but the cloth is, of course, only part of it. For a hot air balloon, you need something to heat up air, and for this, they attached a stove pipe to a gas cylinder and just lit it. So they let out a lot of gas going through a pipe, controlling the output from the gas can to control the size of the flame. That's sure. More gas, more flame. Yep. Less gas, less flame. Good to describes it. What came forth from this burner was not just a flame, but pure hellfire. <laughs> and our 11 <laughs> kilos of gas was used up in no time at all. Oh, my. 11 <laughs> kilos yeah. of gas. So they decided they'd need two 11 kilo cylinders of uh, liquid. That's 22. Gas. And no time at all? <laughs> D- times two? <laughs> yeah, that doesn't sound like that much no. longer. Okay. Are we just going to brush past my quick math there? That was very quick. That 22. Was. Oh, uh, one one is one, two twos is two, three threes is three. I do math as well. So you're gonna you're gonna praise me now. Yeah, Matt, great job. Thank you. <laughs> no funny fact about uh, a guy called Fibonacci. <laughs> <laughs> uh, finally, they needed the gondola, which is the usually wicker basket bit that the people travelling in a hot air balloon stand in. Mm-hmm. They didn't have a basket on hand, so they had to make their own alternative. They welded a steel base and attached supports to the corners. So there was one in each. There's four four corners sticking out from the steel base and then made guardrails that would keep them from falling out by just threading washing line around it. So it looks like a mini homemade boxing ring. Cool. Oh, cool. Yeah. Steel and they've got... seems heavy, though, uh, rather oh, yeah. than wicker. It is, it is heavy, yeah. Well, they've got small kids. Just oh. to entertain them on the trip, they could just make them fight. Oh, that's true. Ding, ding. <laughs> and also instead of dropping sandbags, they can just drop kids. Yes. The oh, loser of the flight low. gets... Gets dropped. Dropped. Yeah. Over a body of water, hopefully, but no promises. Yeah, no promises. Can't we just drop some of the bricks? No. 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 Jimothy, you're out. <laughs> yeah. I worked hard for those bricks. I did not work hard for you. <laughs> you were an accident. You came too easy, mate. <laughs> Very quickly, too. And I love you, but you got to go. <laughs> you got to go, mate. So you are the bricks, and you know I love me bricks. There's 10,000 of them and one of you. I mean, do the maths, mate. <laughs> Even Jess Perkins could get this right. Little, little, uh, oh, I don't know if I could. Little backhanded compliment there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they did all everything I've just said. They did that in six weeks. Wow, pretty good. And on April twenty eighth, nineteen seventy eight, they were ready for the first test flight. They had scoped out a deserted forest nearby, which was just ten k from the border. And at midnight, under the cover of darkness, it was time to see if the, their calculations and hard work <coughs> would pay off. Nineteen seventy eight. Oh, this I'm picturing this in. The olden days. Yeah. Cold Chisel released their first album in 1978. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. It's, it's a, wild. That, and you're imagining William Shakespeare. I'm th- I'm picturing black and white. There's colour TV in 1978. How old were you in 78? Oh, many, many centuries. <laughs> <laughs> so they went out to the clearing to... Uh, I was reaching my first trimester. Is that a thing in time? Uh, Three centuries. Oh, I see. Yeah, sure. Okay. So you aim for nine? Yeah, nine centuries. Great. Yeah, I'm a cat. I've got nine century lives. You've mixed up many things together. <laughs> and I love it. Uh, so they went to the clearing. The two men's wives came along and the ladies held the opening of the balloon out so that their husbands could warm the air at the balloon's opening using the flame. So you've got your two wives oh. there holding it open with a giant hellfire flame very close to their hands. Hellfire. I, I, wasn't, I was imagining their wives in like... Olden day dresses. Yeah, it's the late seventies. Yeah, this is beyond the summer of love. Yeah, yeah. they're just wearing flares. Or Maybe <laughs> jeans. Actually, to be honest, in the East Germany, I don't know what they were wearing. Great. High fashion, obviously. Yeah, 
Uh, at this point, it was just lying on the ground. They hoped that the hot air would enter the bl- at the bottom of the balloon and then just slowly inflate and then stand up. Yeah. They tried several times, but it just wouldn't inflate. Just oh. lay flat on the ground. Got a leak. <coughs> Well, their first, first thought was that maybe they needed to dangle the balloon from a structure. Oh, dangling always helps. Yeah. So it was already standing upright and then it yeah. just sort of fills up with air. They t- uh, tried a nearby bridge but discovered they had to cross a stream to get to it and uh, being quite cold, they uh, abandoned the attempt and went home. Jeez, this is sounding pretty public now, working off a bridge and this sort of stuff. Mm. Well, that's supposed to be in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night. But yeah, you never know who's watching. In the meantime, they discovered that air was escaping the balloon as the material wasn't as airtight as they hoped. Right. They tried to make it more airtight by using a chemical but didn't have enough to cover the whole balloon. Uh. So they just covered as much as they could, sort of the top section. <laughs> One last time, using the method of dangling the balloon and filling it up, they decided to give it a try. So is this D-Day? If it goes up, they're going? No, they're this is just a test. test. Okay. And if it works, next time we'll bring the kids along and we'll go right, for it. Right, yep. They went to a local quarry this time. Again, in the dead of the night, and they spread out the balloon on the quarry's steep incline. So it's like sort of like a cliff type thing, and it's on quite a steep angle. They're like, maybe it'll stand up. It was, it was a moonlit night, optimal for testing. But as Peter was laying out the balloon, he saw a shadow of what he had to assume was someone watching them. Fearing that they'd been rumbled, they stuffed the balloon into their trailer and sped out of the quarry. I thought you were going to say into their trousers. Yeah. <laughs> 800 <laughs> cubic meters. Nah, nothing to worry about here, sir. <laughs> this is the biggest bulge ever. <laughs> nah, I've just got a boner. <laughs> I've got a big boner. We were just having sex in this quarry. <laughs> we're having a magical hug. <laughs> You've rumbled us. Want to join? <laughs> <laughs> Or do you just like to watch? Uh, so they feared they'd been rumbled. They stuffed it in the trailer and their pants and they sped out of the quarry. They drove like crazy, but no one appeared to be following them. So they pulled over after a few miles to check. It was check. a log. It was a log, wasn't it? <laughs> well, they got out the back to check on the balloon, only to discover that a five metre section had been dangling from the back of the trailer whilst oh, they were speeding they and it had, that... had been torn to shreds. Oh, oh no. no. They'd stuffed it so quickly they just sped off and it just got ruined by the road. Yeah, when you're going into the... <laughs> is this the gulags? Is this what the gulags are? The the jails? Well, yeah, you go to a sort of prison. So, I mean, when, like that's, that. when that's the other option, you would be stuffing quickly, wouldn't you? Oh, you'd be stuffing at all times. Yeah. They decided to cut their losses and start again with another balloon, this what? time made of an airtight material. Oh, that's They're starting like again. Call. Start. But this time with an airtight material. Sure, no, that sounds like a good plan. That seems like a good idea from the get go. But they've already built. One balloon using so much material, which I can't imagine was cheap, and now they're starting again. Yeah, they have invested a lot of money so far. Wow. To avoid suspicion, Peter chopped up the balloon into small pieces and burnt it in his boiler over several oh, months. burning leather. That would have stunk. Oh, no. <laughs> but this time they're going to use denim, and I think that's clever. Yeah. It'll just look better. I mean, you, yeah. could, you, could hardly, you couldn't put it out with the rubbish. 800 <laughs> Yeah, you probably it'd be a bit sus. Put in your neighbour's bin. <laughs> There's probably... this huge plume of black smoke coming above their place. What's going on yeah. there? Oh, just a little Barbie. For four months straight. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Your Denim stopped. would be better as well. You get different colours and just sort of have yeah. that like patchwork look. Stonewash. So cool. Cut offs. <laughs> yeah, yeah I got a cut off blimp. <laughs> uh, if the balloon had worked, the men had planned to travel into Czechoslovakia and launch from there. Czechoslovakia, as I said before, also being part of the Soviet Union at the right. time. To get there, they would need to hire a second vehicle to transport the equipment because one would have all the kids in, yeah. in, in the wives and the other one would have all the equipment. Gunter writes on his website that it was not just possible to book a hire car in the day like it is now back in the Soviet Union. You had to apply weeks in advance and you couldn't just cancel it on the day either. Yeah. So he wrote, quote, as a result of this in our balloon, which had now ceased to exist, I had the pleasure uh, pleasure for a week of driving around the neighbourhood completely aimlessly in a relatively new Mokeswitch 412. Because they'd already booked in. <laughs> he'd booked the car. He'd already paid for it, so we just had a hire car for a week. Just <laughs> driving around. <laughs> Fred, how are you? Check out the uh, mock switch here. <laughs> and then the next week he doesn't have it. Fred yells out, put it in H. Simpsons there? No. Should go uh, 300 hectares on a single tank, single tank of kerosene. <laughs> oh, man, that is one of my favourite all-time Simpsons jokes. Well, I look forward to someone getting that. Jacob Lane, our Simpsons uh, expert, get will get that. I heard put it in each. Put it in eight. That's what confused me. Do, do you know that line? Now I think it rings a bell. Homer goes to buy, uh, to hire, or to buy a car from 
Eastern Europe, and he says to him, oh, uh, "What country is he from?" It no longer exists, <laughs> <laughs> and he can't get it go- can't get it going. And the guy yells out, "Put it in H!" <laughs> Fuck, that is funny. Uh, uh, anyway, look it up. Google, look at it. Uh, put it in H if you ha- if you haven't seen that at home. It's funny because it's a different letter to what you would normally put. Yeah, yeah. In. we put right, it in Dave? D. Yes, yeah, you put it in the D. Put it in H. It's so funny. D for drive. Yeah. What's the H for, Dave? <laughs> Bombo. <laughs> uh, so it was back to the drawing board and a number of materials were tested for balloon number two. Do it. They discovered that taffeta, which is a synthetic fabric with a crisp texture, was available in large quantities at a store 160 kilometres away, which they hoped was far enough away to avoid attracting suspicion. It was also good for it was also airtight. They told the salesman that they needed the enormous quantity of material because they were part of a sailing club and needed to make sales. Great. Again, the guy's like, I don't care. <laughs> That's fine. You're making a I big hate. purchase. I don't we give a shit. We all do jobs here that we hate. I got given it this was pulled out of a hat and now I'm a sales manager. I'm a doctor back home. Yeah. So I don't care. I don't care. Do whatever you care. want. I hope you're getting out. <laughs> See ya. Whatever. Uh, this lie again seemed to satisfy the seller, and they drove home with 800 meters or 2,600 feet of fabric. A shitload. They souped up their sewing machine with a larger engine. Wow. Oh. And this time, Gunther, Gunther was able to sew the second balloon in less than two weeks. <coughs> they then needed to test it again, which they did, and this time it inflated. Yay! Woo! Gunther writes Words can hardly describe what we felt in this moment. We were simply overwhelmed by the spectacle before us. We walked around the balloon and were certain that this glowing ball of fire would bring us to the west. Oh, boy. Exciting. But the celebrations were short-lived as they couldn't get the necessary heat uh, to be able to take off and carry the required weight. Mm. Uh. They found that the burner would diminish over time so it just wouldn't stay inflated. Over the following months, they experimented with more propane than with petrol, but sadly it wouldn't work. They decided to try adding oxygen to the mix. You know, when you add oxygen to a fire, it usually goes out of control. Again, quoted from Gunther, One can imagine how this combination of fuel and oxygen would have behaved and what a terrible thing could occur. Fortunately, nothing dramatic happened and the flame reached a height equivalent to a three-story house. Nothing dramatic happened. We got a flame three stories high. Oh, my God. Still not as high as their, their balloon, though, right? No, it still wasn't enough to sustain a flight with eight people. So the men began to grow disillusioned with the idea and worry about the risks they'd be exposing their children to should the idea go wrong and they crash land, let alone be arrested once they crash land. Yeah. Gunter started to think that maybe building a glider would be a better way to escape, so they shelved the idea. Oh, my God. They destroyed all the evidence that would link them to the plot and went back to their normal working lives and tried to get, go back to normal society. Or so Gunter thought. Oh, no. He'd since stopped working with Peter at the plastics factory and the two had had a few disagreements over safety, according to Gunter, so they'd had a slight falling out and they weren't seeing each other every day anymore. Months went by and it was now summer and one day Gunter heard about a homemade hot air balloon that had been discovered abandoned near the border area. He was sure it must have been Peter making an escape attempt without him and he was right. You absolute prick. Peter. Peter, your dog. Peter, your prick. Dog, you Peter. piece of work. <laughs> Peter, you fucking dog. You low dog. You dog. You fucking dog, Peter. You dog. You fucking dog. Bet you don't even believe in women's rights. You dog. When were you dog. on International Women's Day? You dog. 1978. Just trying to bloody... You're a sick dog, make, Peter. Make an escape. Get him to the vet, Peter, you dog. You're a sick dog. Put him down. Get this Peter boy down, you sick boy. Peter, if you're listening, um. Peter's still around. Well, no, Gunter's still around, I'm afraid. Okay. You got put down, Peter, you <laughs> sick dog. Uh, so, what had happened was Peter had continued to work on the idea without Gunter. In June 1979, he had discovered that with the pro tank, uh, propane tank inverted, additional pressure caused the liquid pro- uh, propane to gasify, which would create a bigger flame, which was 12 meters or nearly 40 feet long. He theorised this was big enough to carry his family and he could sustain the flame. Yeah, okay. That was the difference. But he hadn't told Gunther. So on July the 3rd, Peter and his family made a genuine attempt. They took off from a forest clearing at 1.30 in the morning and quickly began to climb, reaching an altitude of 6,000. 
8,600 feet or 2,000 meters, according to an altimeter that uh, Peter had made by modifying, modifying a barometer. The wind was blowing in the right direction and they were quickly headed for their western German destination, but then they hit dense cloud. Atmospheric water vapor condensed on the balloon and the added weight of the water caused the balloon to descend. Oh, no. They were forced to land, which thankfully they did so safely. But in the dark, Peter had no idea where they were and if they'd actually made it over the border yet. Peter explored until he found a piece of litter, which was a bread bag from a bakery uh, that was part of an East German town that he knew and he knew that they hadn't quite got there. Damn it. Whoa. They were, in fact, in the dangerous border zone, the the no man's land that no one's allowed to be seen oh, in. Oh, no. So they risked being shot. so close. Yeah, and they risked being shot on sight. He's there with his two kids. Crap. The family spent nine hours moving quietly in the dark to get away from the 500 metre wide border zone to avoid detection. They also had to travel unnoticed through five kilometres of a restricted zone before hiking back. All in all, they, t- they walked a total of 14 kilometres or nearly nine miles back to their car where all the launch paraphernalia was just left there in the open, now it was daylight, they made it home just in time to report that they were going to be absent for, due to sickness from work and school that day. So they were pretty close to being caught out. <coughs> but they had to believe the balloon. Fucking hell. They had to leave the balloon at the border, which was discovered by the Stasi, who issued a wanted sign looking for information connected to the crime. As a precaution, Peter sold the car that he'd used to take off that he'd driven to the takeoff area that day to sort of cover his tracks a bit. So a couple of weeks went by. <laughs> and Jeez. They were, they were sort of waiting for a knock on the door. Yeah, geez, this got tense. I mean, selling the car after the fact, <laughs> it doesn't help you a lot. If anything, it's kind of incriminating. Yeah, and then they why did you sell that car? Or yeah, that's the car that we saw. Is this your car? Yeah, I just bought it off that guy. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah, that, that family was sick the day of the balloon. Yeah, yeah, them. Yeah, yeah they're cool. They're not, nothing to see, nothing to worry about. Yeah. Hmm. Guess he's that's a bit, a, actually a bit of a dog, though. This guess dog, that's Peter. a dead He's a bit of a dog. He's a sick dog. He's a sick dog. He's a uh, I think Oh, uh, I think he wasn't at work because he was at the vet because he's, he's a dog. He's a, sick, he's a dog, sick dog. Sick dog. Peter, you dog. A couple of weeks went by and Peter and his family were relieved to find that they apparently weren't connected to the escape, but they were worried that they could be at any moment. I'm glad that nothing happened to them, obviously. I'm glad that they were okay and they survived and everything, but I'm also kind of glad they didn't make it. Oh, really? Because fuck I wanted you, Peter. Ma- you know? I wanted them to no, make it. No, but he, like, he just dogged his he friend. He dogged Did he? I mean, he, but if he got his family across and then sent a letter back saying, hey, here's, uh, how you do it. here's the propane inverter thing, that, you know, maybe... Maybe sometimes you just got to do what you got to do for your family. Yeah, I guess so. Well, Peter. But yeah, I know it's tricky. I don't know how I'd behave tricky. under a dictatorship. Yeah. Well, Peter came to Gunter, his old friend, cap in hand, and he explained everything and asked Gunter if he would work with Peter to build a third balloon. Oh, my God, Peter, give up. Peter sort of said so. It was, it was so close. Sort of said sorry. It went without, yeah. Gunter realized that if Peter was, be, was to be discovered, that surely he would too. Yeah. Right. So they decided to work together just to get the hell out of there as soon as they could. Because yeah. if one goes, the other one's probably going to disappear as well. So yeah. yep. now they've got a target drawn on them. Gunter called in sick and took holiday leave to set aside five weeks to work on the balloon full time. He skipped five weeks holiday. In no, I think it was more like he got a, a couple and he went to his doctor and faked an illness right. to get a, a note to say why he couldn't go to work for three weeks. Right. And then so he was at home for five and he's like, I'm just going to make a balloon that whole time. He got the fright of his life when an ad appeared in the local paper. Did you say fart of his life? Sounded like it. (laughs) He got the fart of his life. Well, that's what he told the doctor. (laughs) Doc, I've had the fart of my life. (laughs) I woke up the neighbour's two doors down. (laughs) (laughs) The doctor's like, all right, you better have three weeks off. I I had three pretzels a couple of weeks ago and nothing since then. And then all of a sudden. (laughs) It's the fart of my life. Oh, kaboom. I've been farting for three days straight. It's one continuous stream. Can you hear slash smell it, Doc? And then they inverted Gunter <laughs> and used him to propel the... <laughs> that was the secret. They needed that all along. Pretzel power. <laughs> <laughs> he got the fright of his life when an ad appeared in the local paper detailing the found balloon and other f- personal items found at the crash site. Oh. The ad appealed for further information and this kicked the duo's ass into gear. Oh, they inverted it, his which, ass. Which it was already in gear. <laughs> 
That was a turbo charge. Honestly, at this point, we need to get out of gear. It's, it's oh an issue. God. He's going to kill someone. He can't retain any air. <laughs> Put it in H. <laughs> Put it in H. Uh, they had to build their biggest balloon yet and needed more material than ever. But uh, the, th- the authorities might be monitoring the shops more than ever. Now a balloon had been discovered, a homemade balloon. Yeah, they're probably so- especially looking out for people buying large <laughs> rolls of material yeah. similar to that of the balloon they Don't found. worry, I'm not making a balloon. I'm part of a sailing club. <laughs> Still, yeah, we just we burn all those last boats, though, um, for fun. In the yeah. movie adaptation of this, it's the same shopkeeper but at every different shop. Oh, really? They're in my mind, I imagine that oh, they're right. going to buy material. And it's, it's <laughs> I'm like, what's this low-budget film? <laughs> there's a guy at Spotlight and then there's a guy on uh, another side of town going, I don't care about your elaborate backstory. Okay, bub, it's that guy from The Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> it seems to be in every job yeah. around Springfield. Uh, so they only bought in small quantities and they got the four adults, the two men and the two wives, to all buy a little bit, little bit, little bit. Yeah, yeah. During this time, the men lived in constant fear. At any moment, they feared a knock at the door, meaning they could be arrested and disappear forever. Gunter writes of when he thought it was all over. One day, the two men were out driving. As we approached the street crossing, a police officer suddenly appeared and stopped us. In this moment, we were absolutely convinced that our number was up. Luckily, that was not so. We had simply driven the wrong way down a one-way street. (laughs) But yet they were still incarcerated. Yeah, yeah, that's right. (laughs) Ten years hard (laughs) labour. And we got out and we kept making a balloon. To add to the urgency, Gunter had also been called into the military and was due to start in less than two months. If they were going to go for it, they'd have to go soon because once he was in the military, he was, he was not going to be able to escape anymore. The third balloon was finished on September 14. It had doubled in size compared to the previous balloon and was now 4,000 cubic <laughs> metres in volume. It was uh, 20 metres in diameter and 25 metres tall. 85 82 feet high. That's so... That's massive. It's so big. That's it's gross, insane. <laughs> the men worried that they'd that's have to... Big, is that bigger than, like, your stock standard hot air balloon? I actually don't really know. I don't think I've ever really even been close to one. I've been in one. Where'd you go? And I reckon there were... There was the guy flying it and then easily six people in it. I mean, we didn't bring a fridge, though. Right. So or maybe, or bricks. yeah, and I didn't have the stove down the bottom. We just went, we just went out for breakfast after. Oh uh, yeah, it was a leisurely thing, yeah. not so much a fleeing the country thing. Yeah, sure. That's what I tell people sure. anyway. So yeah, but they, I mean, they're very big. But yeah. I'm imagining this to be even bigger. It just sounds huge. Yeah, to me. it is. It is quite large. It, yeah, especially quite. for a two two man made thing. Yeah, in t- massive. Yeah, well, they were worried that they'd have to wait for the right weather, but just two days later on September 16th, amazingly, conditions were perfect. And oh, so they they know that they need the wind going, obviously, yeah, from right direction, east to west. That kind of thing. Like, it's not better if there's a moonlit night <laughs> so they can see a bit more yeah. so it's not pitch black. It's good that you figured that out because I would have been like, oh, how do you know which way the wind is? East to west makes perfect sense, actually, yeah. Wow. Well, because yeah. that's where they're trying to go. Yeah. I, yeah, but I mean, the, depending on the angle, I imagine that it's not directly <laughs> yeah, drawn yeah, yeah. north no, to south, no. right? So <laughs> now I've got no idea. Then all of a sudden, the wind's blowing and they're just hovering along the border. <laughs> Come on, please, a little yeah. more, fifteen more meters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they hadn't had a chance to test this new balloon, but decided to risk it, take advantage of the conditions, and just make yeah. an attempt. Oh god, you've never tested it. That's terrifying. And with yeah. the kids. And you're getting your kids. There's a two-year-old here. But isn't, don't you reckon there's part of it be like you you test and it works perfectly. You go, oh, great. Oh, I mean, what gonna, a waste of yeah. that test. Now we've got to wait for perfect Yeah, if it again. works. I can see why they would. And they reckon that they're coming for them any day now, even though that sounds like maybe that's a bit of paranoia. There's no real reason that they're onto them. No, but they just think the, yeah, the they, quicker you go, the better, yeah, just, sure. just in case. Because imagine being like, we'll go tomorrow, and then that morning you oh. get the knock on the door. You'd be like, no. Oh. Mm. So they went to the clearing or a clearing. They fired it up. It took just 10 minutes to it to heat the balloon enough to inflate it. And just after 2 a.m. Way past the kid's bedtime. Mm. Oh. <laughs> the two-year-old. Insane? I'm not going anywhere at 2 a.m. And it's also like, I think it's minus eight degrees outside as <laughs> well. Other oh. than nine eyes. <laughs> I'll go nine eyes at 2 a.m. Yeah, 2 a.m. Thanks very much. Yes. Yeah, bloody bed at that, that Matt, kind of Matt, say it properly, please. I got a bloody bed of eyes. Nine eyes. Nine eyes. <laughs> I got nine eyes. Dave, when when you go nine eyes? 
uh, about 2.01 a.m. Oh, you're a bad boy. So uh, as soon as I'm in the air, I'm out. Yeah. I'm hoping for the best after that, at that point. <laughs> <laughs> Wind, <laughs> take the lead. Yeah, see you guys in about six to eight. <laughs> <laughs> None of them tied. <laughs> uh, just after 2 a.m., Gunter, Peter, their two wives and their four children, aged 2 to 15, got into the gondola. Gunter describes the takeoff. Uh, we stood diagonally opposite each other in the basket and cut the ropes at our respective corners. Up until then, everything had gone smoothly, but then came our first problems. I had been a little quicker in cutting my second rope, which the bl- and so the balloon was still hanging on by one rope on the other side, was now listing to one side. This also resulted in the burner tilting and the flame being directed onto the material, which by now had caught fire. Oh, that's bad. Furthermore, the last anchor in the ground was ripped out and catapulted towards hitting um, Frank, which is one of the other people on board, squarely on the head. Blood was now running down his face. Luckily, we had a fire extinguisher with us, so Peter simply needed to reduce the flame whilst I put out the fire. Frank's injury turned out to be not so serious after all, so we could press ahead without further ado. And we blasted him with the fire extinguisher. (laughs) But in that, they're like, you're in, you're like, all right, family, we're doing this. Within a minute, it's on fire, and one of your kids is bleeding from the head. You're like, oh, this is not a good start. Fuck. So that, he's one of the kids. You said he was one of the other guys on the thing. I'm like, yeah, so I who's think this it, other guy? I think it might be the teenager, the oldest, right. oldest, oldest boy. So they were off, but then Gunter looked up and could see a hole at the top of the balloon that well, shouldn't bad. be there. Despite the hole, they just kept rising and rising. Okay. Gunter realised that because of the hole, they'd have to keep the burn, the burner blasting at full blast the whole time, just to keep enough heat to keep them airborne. Because usually the heat would stay trapped inside, yeah. but now it's just leaking through the hole in the oh, roof. Geez. So it's just full blast, keep it going. They again reach an altitude of two thousand meters above the ground. No clouds, no clouds. It was completely dark, and the border didn't have lights. Something they hadn't actually considered. So they, so they don't know when they They don't know when it. they're over the border. The balloon had wow. been... Wow, is, is that, that's tactical from the border? Well, I read that uh, they also turned the power off and they only turned the power back on in the morning right. amongst the society. Huh. Probably to conserve energy and control people, probably from doing things at night, I imagine. Yeah, right. So there's no light. The balloon had been turned around several times and they actually lost all bearings and suddenly they were like, we don't know where we're going. There's no power at night. There's yeah. no power. But surely on the other side of the border, there's power. Yeah, there'll be power, yeah. So there'll be when they can start seeing lights, that's a good sign. That's when they... Your fridge is off every night. Ugh. Can't watch TV at this night. This is in 1978. Your what? fridge is off. Welcome to the dictatorship. How are you keeping your goods? Cold sack, wet sack. Mm. Cold sack, <laughs> wet sack. Oh, my God. <laughs> he just made Dave spit water <laughs> back into his drink bottle. That was rank. <laughs> I was having a drink and I just heard Matt go, cold sack, wet sack. <laughs> cold sack, wet sack. <laughs> Give it a wet sack. Cold sack, cold wet sack. sack. Wet sack. <laughs> <laughs> it just really got me and I wasn't even looking at you and I just had to spit back into the bottle. Oh, it's so funny. So they weren't sure which direction they were flying, but they flew on completely silent in the gondola except for the bird are going. <laughs> That's all. It's quite loud. It was a tense mood, to say the least. They saw searchlights and were worried that they'd been rumbled, but luckily they were too high for the search. <laughs> I've never, I've never rumble. heard rumbled before in this context. I love it. Don't you love that word, rumble? I do, but I would never have used it in this context, and I'm loving it. That's my that's my sizzle, baby. I've put that in. Yeah. No other website's using rumble. That's me. That's all you. That's all D-Dub. Uh, yeah. Cold sack, wet sack. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, luckily, they were too high to be rumbled by the searchlights. It couldn't <laughs> light them up. Oh, that's good. So it's going well, kind of. I mean, you're, at least you're flying. You're going somewhere. Yeah, and if you're there's alive. searchlights, you're heading in the right direction. Yeah, right. Yeah, right? Why that's were they... probably on the border. Yeah, on the border to stop people from yeah. doing stuff like this. But suddenly, uh-uh. the burner went out. No. Oh, oh, no. They tried to get it going again in the eight degree below Celsius weather, but thinking it's too cold. That's the problem. All it's right, minus well, eight. Yeah. Fuck. So we'll so just relight cold. it. We'll just relight it. So it's below, for um, people in Fahrenheit, it's below, it's below freezing. It's very, very cold. But they could only relight it for a short time before it would go out again. They soon realised that they were completely out of gas because they'd been pumping it yeah. at full blast. Oh, 2,000 metres above the ground, they started to descend into unknown territory. Because 
once it runs out, you just mm. slowly go down and, and they can't really control that. They've got no idea where they're going to land. At least it's slowly and not just like, oh, you're fucked. Yeah, you just want that arc to be yeah. travelling over. Yeah. Homer Simpson on the on the skateboard over the <laughs> Springfield Gorge. Yeah. I'm going to make it. You're gonna I'm going to make it. It's the greatest thrill of my life. <laughs> I'm not going to make it. <laughs> Thankfully, their landing was quite light. Okay. Uh, they used a car light to to sort of guide their way. So they had a car light on board. I imagine hooked up to a battery. I think that's what it was to sort of light the ground so they could see where they were going. Uh, on the ground day, rapidly obviously. approached. So they crash landed and were suddenly back on solid Cold, ground. So. They were all – pardon? <laughs> I said they've got the light on high beam. And Matt said, yeah, it's cold. <laughs> uh, fortunately, they were able to get out of the basket without assistance so that they immediately realised, all right, well, none of us are seriously injured then if we're all able to walk out of this. Thankfully, no one was injured. Oh, amazing. But they don't know if they've crossed or not. Yeah, they're physically safe, but they have no idea how far they've flown and in what direction. So they could have just flown further into East Germany. <laughs> right. They were terrified that they were still in East Germany. Yeah. They found a street sign that they... Didn't recognise, and that was kind of a good sign, but also they might have just been in a town they didn't know. Yeah. The two men headed to a farm that they could see the light. Oh, well, you know, they could see a farmhouse. The light's the, good. Oh, but they, I, I just but, added that. I okay. actually don't know if the light was on. They could just see a farm. So, and Whilst their wives and children hid in the bushes. So they went ahead to scope it out. The two men headed to a, uh, to a farm barn. They went to a barn, is what I'm trying to say. Farm they, barn. They, a farm barn? No, they, met, they got into a farm barn. Farm sack. Wet <laughs> or, farm sack. Was it a farm barn or was it a pet barn for all <laughs> oh, your no. pet needs? You're what a kind sick of name dog. a pet? Name a pet. Sick dog Peter. A sick dog Peter. Well, we've got leads, dog beds, dog food. <laughs> have got anything for Peter's gingivitis? <laughs> no. <laughs> So they went to a pet. Uh, they went to a pet barn, aka okay, a farm barn, aka okay, a barn. Uh, they saw a brand new piece of farming machinery, something which was basically unheard of in East Germany, oh. and they instantly knew that they'd made yes. it to West Germany. Yes. yes, that was a sign going. No one has anything that nice and new in East Germany. We're in West Germany. Oh my god! Oh, that that must have been so cool. I was expecting they were going to walk up to Disneyland or something. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's Mickey Mouse. This is a good sign. <laughs> Uh, they were safe, and because West Germany recognised all German citizens as German citizens, they knew they could start their lives anew. Oh, oh what a relief. West Germany sounds way better. Yeah, so if you got out of East Germany, you made it to West Germany, they're like, oh, yeah, you're a citizen, cool, no worries. Here's your, you know, you weren't social like, security number equivalent. Yeah, you weren't living in <coughs> terror all the time yeah, and being you, dragged back. Yeah, you could go to the police station and or you could go to the local office and declare and they wouldn't arrest you for being there. They'd be like, oh, great, welcome, welcome in. That's so weird and amazing. Yeah, I mean, it is one. So on one side they see it as one country, and on the other side, very different. Yeah, they're like, "No, come on in." Uh, as they left the barn, a police car approached. <gasps> Gunter writes, "One of us asked them, are we in the west?'" This question was redundant because that was already obvious. The policeman answered, and astonishingly, "Of course you are. Where else would you be then?" <laughs> no one could scarcely imagine that East Germans would just appear out of nowhere in the middle of the night, 10k away from the border. <laughs> 10k. A, they made it 10k. Just made it they were 10 kilometers into Whoa. into the safe west. The two men then let off a firework at their sit- butt. <laughs> <laughs> they <they're laughs> one <celebrated>. butt. <laughs> They have one butt between them. They, they let, let off a firework. What firework? I'm one imagining butt. one of those weird little just crackers, <clears throat> like a, a little firecracker, just goes Spe- like bang. A spelly whirl. A spelly whirl. That, that spelly whirl was to signal to their wives in the bushes that they were safe because they were still there, not knowing if yeah, it was Yeah, we're not going to walk back. I know. <laughs> They're you 300 metres away. That's 300 metres closer to East Germany. We're not going there. Oi, Petra. <laughs> Petra. Petra. Petra, I'm, I'm not coming unless you set off that firework. <laughs> I only respond and speak in fireworks. <laughs> oh, she mad. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, let Frank get hit in the head. You all right, Frankie? Frankie. So they'd made it. It became a big news story around the world. East, German, uh, East Germany, the authorities there were pissed off and were worried about copycat crimes. They immediately increased border security, closed all small airports close to the border, and ordered the planes kept farther inland. 
Propane gas tanks became registered products and large qual- uh, quantities of fabric suitable for balloon construction oh, could fuck. no longer be purchased. They so really you- screwed everyone yeah. else everyone- over. But they were like, well, we thought of it first. Yeah. Ugh. Well, only 11 years until the wall comes down, I guess. Don't, like, don't respond to interview requests, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, keep <laughs> it down. Don't talk about it. Keep it down. Keep it Give secret. other people a chance. Did you say they have to keep, uh, what was the line about the planes? Keep, keep them farther. Quite, keep them further away. Keep, keep them further inland. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> Will they shoot them down otherwise? In case someone steals a plane? Well, I mean, because it's, you know, it's easy. I suppose they're like, well, People it's easy, jump to fl- out. easy to fly 10 minutes than it is to fly an hour. Right. So we'll just put them further east. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's weird. They are sounding paranoid now. Yeah. It's so strange. I don't understand it at all. This kind of keep them in, you're ours. It's like, what did they do? Are you treating them like prisoners? Yeah. What did they do? It's all about control. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's not very, it doesn't sound very nice. You should, probably shouldn't be viewing your people as the enemy. Yeah. Honestly, Mr. Gorbachev, <laughs> tear down that wall. Tear down this shiny object that's slight, that's Glaring into my eyes. I can't read my speech. <laughs> oh, my God. That, that, that mirror ball. What are you doing? <laughs> also, I'm a donut. That might be a different thing. <laughs> <laughs> the families later learned that they'd been, so, they'd been high enough to be detected but not identified on radar by West German air traffic controllers. They'd also been detected on the East German side by a night watchman. So that's who had tried to shine the light on them, but they were too high. So they had oh, been spotted. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, you'd see the flame. Yeah, the report of an unidentified flying object heading towards the border caused guards to activate the searchlights, but the balloon was too high, just out of reach. So yeah. So that was the it was a smart <laughs> way to go, up up high. Uh, Peter and Gunter, wow. the two masterminds, were highly sought after in the media. Gunter says that due to a hamstring injury from the crash landing, he was unable to participate in as running many... races. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never won the hundred yard dash again. He was unable to talk to the media as much as Peter. What do you mean? Because of a hamstring injury. Yeah. Well, this is on his website. Remember, balloonflux.de. And this is when the two men began to fall out with one another. It becomes a bit of a soap opera from here. Gunter writes, This time Peter has unfortunately used to represent the entire history so that the idea of the escape was his and also the design and construction of all components and would have been his, his thing only. Only the sewing of the balloon he left after his statements to me. Right. So he's... Good to say that Peter has taken all the taken credit. all the credit except for sewing. <coughs> so, who had the hamstring and wasn't able to talk to Gunter, the Gunter, the younger one, right? And he he would he's the one still has the website where he's like, it's, right. I think it's called the falling out is written on the website. There's a page about this. Oh, that's sad. He let, he said that our family retired from the media in January 1980 to get back to a normal life. The other family, on the other hand, Peter's family, were regularly present in the media and further some made public appearances where there was not anything of obvious importance to say. The versions of the story from Peter even go as far to say that he planned the entire escape, built everything, and essentially took us along only as an act of pity. Yeah, right. Oh, I Peter, mean, you dog. Yeah, he's, he's a dog. He was a dog all along. But It's if you believe everything he writes. Because he, he also says the final straw in their relationship was twice he found out that Peter had declined invitations on Gunter's family's behalf oh. without asking them and chose to go to the, the event himself. Oh, that's oh. weird. It's so weird. Yeah. He the... even writes, Gunter writes on his website, I still don't know why he did this. Oh, that sucks. Uh, Peter Streslick. Oh, sorry, Strelzik. It's such a strange name to see written down. Uh, Peter Strelzik died in 2017 at the age of 74, Whoa. having never made up with Gunter, who was still alive at the time of recording and blogging on his website. Oh, it's such a... So uh, how old's Gunter? I'm guessing... That... He was... How many years? Sorry. Ago? No, that's okay. He, he wasn't was... in his 20s? Yeah, so he so was... He's a... still pretty young. He, he was 20s. 13 years younger. So he's in his uh, mid-60s now. Yeah, yeah, that's wild. It's my dad's age. Yeah. Yeah, and my dad's age. And your dad's <laughs> age. <gasps> Gunter? <laughs> <laughs> Gunter Warnicky? <laughs> Is it you? <laughs> my goodness. Wow. Uh, the Escape has been portrayed in two films, Night Crossing, which is a 1982 Disney film starring John Hurt as Peter and Bo Bridges as Gunter. I'd never heard of it. There you go. 82. It's also been more recently portrayed in a German film called Balloon that came out in 2018. 
balloon. Luft balloon, surely. Yeah. Yeah. What but does y- luft mean? What does balloon mean? <laughs> is that red? Because it's ninety nine yeah, red balloons. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Ninety nine luft balloons. Uh, so I don't know. That's the story. Uh, it's an Whoa. amazing. It's an amazing tale. It's sad that they uh, did this amazing thing together. That like, honestly is unthinkable. And then yeah, fell surely. Out. I mean the. They did it. They got freedom. Yeah. They really should have just... Sure, I would have thought it would be a Take the celebration together. from there. It's so sad that humans can do that. I can, I can imagine us having a big falling out, though, at the end of the pod, you know? Yeah. I prefer it at the end rather than the middle. Yeah, good point. Yeah. But, I I mean, is this as impressive as escaping... Uh, well, how long did that take us? Germany? Uh, that was, that was about an 18 month process. Yeah, yeah, right. We've been doing this for four yeah, years. Fuck off, nerds. We can do <laughs> This is like. This is way more stick impressive at than it. building a hot air balloon and escaping a country. Yeah. Yeah. All it right. is. <laughs> <laughs> it takes me like half an hour to drive here once a week. Um, that's well. hard. <laughs> <laughs> Really tickled yourself uh, yeah, no, hot pink sorry, over I there. didn't tickle myself. <laughs> so there are movies, and in it, the um, haberdashers are all played by the same actor. Is that right, Dave? <laughs> That's in Dave's head. No, that was me directing my own movie. And they're all played by that Simpsons guy who goes, bada bing, bada bang, sugar in the gas <laughs> tank. <laughs> so what character am I playing in your version of this film? Uh, would you like to be the shopkeep? Mm-hmm. You're in several scenes, several different outfits. That's a comedic role. That's Could potentially, yeah. Why like, are you telling me this? Because Gunter's going there again, going, "What? You're the same guy? What? Hmm. You're the every man, huh? So I don't even get to be Gunter. No, Matt's Matt's Gunter. Matt's a million years old. Sorry, I'm Gunter and Matt's Peter. Matt is Father Time. <laughs> I'm the dog. <laughs> yeah. Oh, great. I'm the one who gets all the. Ho- oh yeah, cool. I get all the Hollywood stuff at the end. And so. I don't even get to be anyone's wife in this. I don't get to be Petra. I'm a fucking you shopkeep. Have, you could have hid in the bushes. <laughs> Waited for our fireworks sig- signals. I do prefer to be communicated with in fireworks. <laughs> I do Dave, prefer. That is a wild and amazing story. I lo- I'm loving these stories. We've had a uh, few of them lately that I've just never heard of. And they're, yeah, me either. I feel like they should be so famous. And that, uh, I, I think mean, that, it's been made into two movies. It's pretty yeah. famous. But I think but it's the same as last week. Only one person has suggested it. Is that yeah. Crazy? Yeah, Elliot right. Elliot B from Salt Lake City, thank you so much for suggesting such. Elliot Bay from Salt Lake City. <laughs> yeah. Yay, Bay. Jay Bay? Thanks, Matt. Jay Bay? Yay, Bay. Yay, Bay. Getting involved. Yeah. So. <laughs> Amazing. Well, Matt, does that bring us to everybody's favourite part does. of the show? Do you want to introduce it? Absolutely, I do. This part of the show. Is called fact, quote, or question. Ding! You always come in too early on the fucking. Ding. I don't think I do. I'm Give me a perfect, beat. I'm Give me a fucking beat. I'm not even finished saying question. Would you like it to be off time? Because I can do that, but it will sound bad. Why yeah, don't they always try forget it. The try ding? it now. Try it now. Try it now. Here we go again. Fact, quote, or question. Bing. Oh, it's very early. Wait a half beat, I reckon. Yeah, do it on the off beat. Fact, quote, or question. Bing. Perfect. And on this segment, uh, you can support us at Patreon at patreon.com slash do go on pod. And one of the levels, the Sydney Scheinberg Deluxe Rest in Peace VIP Deluxe Burger section. Oh, I'll have website. a meal, please. Uh, yeah, medium. Large. Yeah, medium's good. Okay, medium's great. Regular, some languages. Uh, and one of the things you get to do on there is you get to give us a fact, a quote, or a question, as well as Bing. doing extra votes and all sorts of things like that. And this, so that I think the people on this level. We'll be uh, voting on your next three reports, Dave. That is correct. I believe so. And as well as that, you also get to give us a fact, a quote, or a question. Uh, this week, the fact, quote, or question is coming from Phil Verhey. Verhey. Very. Verhey. Verhey. I like that one. I really liked the first one. Yeah. You also get to give yourself a title and Phil, which is a fantastic name, fantastic Phil, has given himself the title of Sufferer of misophonia, a lover of all microphone wind muffs. <laughs> <laughs> we got a few in the studio for you, Philly. <laughs> and Phil, fabulous Phil Verhey, has given us a quote, which I reckon maybe is the, I reckon that's the one that we get the least of. 
Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, yeah. we're getting, at, at first, we didn't get many. I think we're getting more of a balance these days. And the quote is this, and I don't read these until I read them. And here we go. The mind is its own place and in itself can make a heaven of hell a hell of heaven. That's from John Milton, who uh, was from the board game Milton Bradley. <laughs> Oh, should I Google it? Have you heard of John Milton? I think he's an old English author. John Milton was an English poet and intellectual who served as a civil servant for the Commonwealth of England under its Council of State and later under Oliver Cromwell. Is he a Westminster Abbey Poets' Corner guy? Uh, resting place, St. Gillies without Cripplegate. <laughs> so, no, I don't think so. That's a strange hmm. place. I love the name of that. St. Gillies dash without dash Cripplegate. Cool. <laughs> uh, there you go. That's that's a cool quote. I think that's true. I think it's a good. That's a good quote. Cheers, Phil. Um, I mean, it's true. It could be true. But I don't know what I'm talking. You haven't about. had time to think about it. No. You got to stew on it a bit. The mind is its own place. I believe that. Yes. I spend a bit of time in mine. Yes. I like it often. <laughs> I often like it up there. Sometimes could go a little vacay. Do you have like an internal monologue though? Yes. We talked about this a bit on Book Cheat this week as well. Have you got one, Dave? Oh, absolutely. I can't shut it off. Yeah, great. I'm me talking, too. talking, talking like I'm talking now, but I talk to myself. Do you know what I notice as well? I sometimes refer, <laughs> in my head, I refer to myself as we. Ah. This I'll is what we're talking like, about with Cass on Book Cheat. She was sort of saying, she had conversations with herself. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure if I do that. I'm like, we've got to get that done. Oh, yeah, maybe I, yeah, maybe I do do that, actually. Oh, right. I think I'm an I. I'm an I. I say we a lot. Yeah, what does that mean about I us? I don't know. I think how, how does that make us better than Dave? Mm-hmm. Uh, it means that we're... We're team players. <laughs> yeah, Dave's Goal selfish. oriented Dave's all like, me, 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 me. We're like, No, I'm we. I, 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 I. <laughs> and Thank we're you. we, 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 we. All yeah. the way home. <laughs> looked up, uh, John Milton has a monument in Poets Corner. Oh, cool. In Strabby. And what can you look up? What's what's with without Cripplegate? Anyway, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, the second fact quarter question this week comes from Zach Llewellyn. Zach with an E at the end. Does that change it? Is that Zachy or is it just still Zach? How what? Z a c h e. Huh. Zash. 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 Llewellyn. <laughs> Uh, who's given himself the title of junior associate to the vice president of booking Matt exclusively above Thirsty Merkigs. Oh, you must have been at one of my uh, Tasmanian shows where I uh, I clashed with Thirsty Merck <laughs> in the same pub. I was in the to... same pub? Yeah. And you oh. didn't cancel and go to Thirsty Merck. Oh, you've made it. Give me 20 good reasons. Is that them? Yeah. Could you hear him? Could you hear him? From your, uh, well, your they, room? they came on pretty much as my show was finishing. I went downstairs and you could, I'd posted a photo on, on social media mm. um, from on the street saying, hey, that was a fun festival. <clears throat> me with the window behind me was Ray Thistlethwaite's ass, basically. You know, the window on the yeah. street went straight onto the stage. That's weird. Did they get much of a crowd down there? They they were well and truly sold out. Fantastic. And you were also sold out, I imagine. Uh well and truly. Well and truly. Well and and tru- I saw your ass from the street. But that was <laughs> looking good. They're very, very popular uh, down there. And probably and elsewhere. Yeah. They but I mean they've got they have a lot of hits. What more do you want? In the summertime. Baby, baby in, in the summertime. summertime. And da- 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 we were doing different bits. Sorry. Or I don't know that song that well. <laughs> which I thought I did. <laughs> <laughs> when we diverge, you were there, of, I've had full doubt. Yeah. Mm. It's okay. Uh, we don't have to how always be his name, Ray Thistlesway. It's incredible. Such a great name. I did not know that. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, is he in Poets Corner? <laughs> yes. I've be. looked up St. Giles with that cripple gate. It's an Anglican church in the city of London. That's where he's buried. Oh. There That's you go. Nice. But it's an amazing, without Cripplegate, I've never heard of that. I yeah. love it. I love it. Because he, in England, they, they name places like... Uh, what, a pond when yeah. it's a, the rivers, the second part. So and I don't know what the without means. Means there's no cripple there's, gate there. There used to be a river, or there's one with a ri- with cripple gate and without. Do you want it with or without? It's like a smoking or non-smoking <laughs> yeah. section. 
Uh, anyhow, Zasha Llewellyn <laughs> has given us a question. We haven't, yes! I feel like we haven't might not have had a question in a while. And uh, his question is... I love to make it about we. What are your phone backgrounds right now? Ooh. Okay. Okay. I have no idea. Oh, look at mine. <laughs> <laughs> It's just black. It's, that is so bleak. It is honestly just black. I don't. I don't remember. I would never have. Would it have come like that? What about like? So you got lock screen and home screen. Yeah, you've got nothing on either. That is so bleak. <laughs> I should. My my um, desktop at the studios has got plugger. Yeah, exactly. At least put plugger on I should there. Should put plugger on. All right, Matt's is boring and. But that'd be distracting. Black. Dave, what do you got? I got uh my girlfriend with our puppy puppy. Yep. Your puppy, which is named Humphrey, Humphrey B. But have you got a different one for your lock screen? My lock screen is our uh, my poor old family dog Pete, who's no longer with us. Yeah, Pete's good. Dog. I can't bring myself to change it. No, nah, fair enough. Good on it's been he's been gone for three years now. I still it's still nice to look at him. Yeah, but no. Why would you, like? Does it make it any less relevant to the back of your phone? No, no, but I just sometimes I think, oh, should I change it? And I think that's kind of nice. I don't let him go. Yeah. Living on forever. That's nice. Yeah, on a phone. I haven't changed my Facebook profile picture in like four years. Should I change it or just keep it forever now? No, nah, change it to one of me. I'm for yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> this is you, this is you now. This is this is you forever. I look like a boy. You know, you know who's yeah, that young fresh? Who's young. that young man? Who's that young boy? And Jess, your background. What are you? What are you rocking? Uh, I've got uh, one of the. Basic iPhone ones is just a blue and uh, really, I quite like it. Do you guys have personal lives? No, no, no. I've got it on the locks. I don't like anything being behind. <laughs> yeah, phone. no, black actually. And your one does look nice with the apps in front. Yeah, of I like yours, the apps you can to see. be able to stand that, I think out. That's what I go went for black. I reckon so they just pop out and you. And I also I feel weird putting a photo of loved ones behind it because I'm like you're just hidden. You're hidden behind all the apps. I want them to be able to be seen. My lock screen is uh, my boyfriend and I wearing uh, turkey hats at Christmas. Mm. Uh, oh, that's a great photo. Yeah, a couple of turkeys. We're just wearing turkey hats and posing like dickheads. That's a good question. Great question. The kind of question I would have never thought to have asked. Thank you so much, Zache or Zach. Thank you. I also got someone came to that show and gave me a six pack of Tasmanian beers to sample, oh. which is still sitting in my kitchen because I'm doing Feb fast. <laughs> so they're going to be the first beers I have when I get uh, get out at the other side. When I get out, get it, get that. When I escape sound. this jail. No, I didn't mean it like that. When I can finally drink my beautiful when beers. When it's early March, mm. um, that was Hannah. Thanks, Hannah. I think I'm so bad with names. I go, I got to just tell her name a few times so I'd remember. Jeez, I hope I haven't fucked it up. <laughs> Her name's Louise. <laughs> I'm not even sure if she listens to this anyway. But um, also, the other thing we like to do, Bob, is your little section where we thank a few patrons. Yes, and I've already thought of something. We are going to assign each of them a mode of transport. Ooh. I okay. Okay, okay. And are they uh, just normal modes of transport or like this, are they part plane, part submarine? Look, then... Well, they could be anything. Ooh. And they don't have to be fleeing a country either. Oh, that's nice. But maybe they are, but probably not, hey. <laughs> that's a nice touch. Um, before we do that, I've got to quickly thank Annabelle Clark Leopard because uh, we fucked that up last week. Anyway, thank you, Annabelle Clark Leopard. Everything we said about you stands, only your first name, which is Annabelle. Yes, because <laughs> we thanked your sister instead. Yes. And Annabelle, anyway... Uh, I'm so sorry about that mix-up. Should we give her a mode of transport? Uh, yes. Uh, one of those motorbikes with a sidecar. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. I that seems be... terrifying. You'd be so low to the ground. Oh, I want to be in there so All right, bad. Great. I'll be on the bike. They must have been featured in David Suchet's Poirot. That feels like that kind yes. of era of oh. transport. Would it have been? Or is that... I don't... I think I'm at... It's definitely motorbikes, but... It feels like uh, the sidekick... Uh, what's his name? Might have ridden one with Suchet in the Hastings. sidecar. Hastings. And, and Poirot going, ooh, <laughs> hating it. Yeah. I say, <laughs> I say, Poirot. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> good Lord. I, I, I every, say. Sidecar, I always think of the cooking show Two Fat Ladies. Oh. They they travelled in one, surely. Was that two, or are you thinking of the Hairy Biker's Guide to Cookery? <laughs> I don't know. One of, you're thinking of a cooking show regardless. Yeah. 
Oh, no, there they are. Let me show you a photo of these lovely. Oh, that was their logo. Yeah, that's right. Two fat, <laughs> yeah. yes. two fat ladies. I'd forgotten about them. They were a big deal. Yeah, they were huge. <laughs> deal. Huge deal. I'm so. I did not mean that. Sorry. I did, honestly did not mean that. David Warner. They embraced. They embraced the, that as their image, but I did not mean it like that. <laughs> one I, was much older than the other, which always really? surprised me. One born in 1947, the other one, 1928. So there's 20 years between Whoa. them. You can be friends with people of different ages. But I just always. That big of a gap? As a child, when Matt. they were big. Matt. I mean, bigger than that, sure, but that big <laughs> specifically? <laughs> Just when you're, but when yeah. you're a kid, old people just look like old people. Definitely. So I was like, oh yeah. I assume they were this about the same <laughs> yeah. age as well. Sadly, they're both no longer with us. Oh. My cousin, when he was a child, asked me how old I was, and I was fifteen, and he went, "Oh my god!" <laughs> like that was so old. <laughs> That's how dumb it is, isn't Little it? Shit. It's dumb when people <laughs> talk like that about age. Anyway, uh, I'd love to thank, firstly, from Salford, England. Salford. Salford. Where's Salford? Salford. Near, n- next to Manchester. Oh, that's we went to the, the Salford, the Salford Boys Lads, Club. Club. Lads Club. That's, that's, that's right. Salford. You've got a T-shirt that says the Salford Lads Club. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Or maybe two. I bought two. I just have the one. That was, a, that was a fun day. Yeah, Salford, right next to Manchester. And from Salford, I'd love to thank Jade Chadwick. Or Chadwick, if, it's, if she's English. And that's how they normally drop the W, don't they? Ah, uh, yes. Jade Chadwick. From Salford, England. Salford. Well, like I reckon Jade travels on a like a souped up electric scooter. Yeah. yeah. Like dangerously fast. To yeah, be yeah, yeah. Jade, slow down. You're gonna hurt someone. Nah, she's sick on it though. <laughs> yeah. She fuck she does tricks and shit, man. It's fucking sick. <laughs> Good on you, Jade. On you, Jade. I love those things. Man, you should have seen me around Christchurch on those bad boys. Holy shit. Yeah, I'm up in Brisbane soon, I oh. should say. Brisbane Comedy Festival coming up. I'm up for the from the tenth to the fifteenth. Uh, please come to the show. You can get tickets at matthstewartcomedy dot com. You gonna be doing a bit of scooting? I am gonna be scooting. They please do. Scoot. They do lime scooters up there. It's only there in Adelaide, I think, that have them. Because Melbourne think... can't be trusted. Now Melbourne have just kicked off. They're doing the Uber ones. Ah, oh, scooters. Uber scooters. Uber scooters. Yeah. No way. Yeah, that's honestly. Really that's... My Uber scooting baby is driving the me crazy. If, like if that. they, yeah. I think it's the kind of thing that I'd almost be able to get rid of my car if if the zone was big enough. I reckon. Driving her gigs out of town is a bit harder on those scooters. Yeah, so but, know, yeah, but fuck, they're fun. Yeah, they're called Jump. Jump. Scooters by Uber. All While right, some Melbourne attempted something like that, they all ended up in the Yarra. Yeah, we suck. But I think Which scooters are more fun than bikes. <laughs> yeah, scooters are way more fun. Anyway. Jade, thank you so much. Thank you, Jade. And I uh, hope you enjoy scooting about. Uh, I'd also love to thank from Bellbird Park in Queensland, Ooh, Cassie okay. Craddock. Cassie Craddock, CC. Um, and Cassie Craddock, her mode of transport is. Oh, I was really hoping something would come in that time. Oh, I've, I've got one. Great, go. What, a billy cart. Oh, oh a billy yes. Cart? yes. Not powered. You just got to take it up a hill and, and hope for the best when you're going down. Yeah. Just like a, and you got like a rope. Yeah, you're steering with the, the rope. Yeah. Wheels. Yeah. Wow, Billy Cut. That's a lot of fun. I think that maybe, do they call them like soapbox derbies or yeah, that's in America? Right. Yep. Or in North America? Yes. Yeah. Isn't there a band called Boxcar Racer? Is that, no, that was of... Tom DeLonge, Tom other band. Tom DeLonge. With? With Travis on drums. Yeah. And the guy from Rancid, maybe? What's, who was the other guy? <laughs> <laughs> Important well, stuff. <laughs> can I thank some people as you well? You sure can. Thank you, Cassie. Thank you, Cassie. How uh, was the first thing? Jade Chaddock. Cassie Craddock. Crazy. I hope we have more rhyming names. <laughs> it doesn't look like we're going to. It is hugely disappointing. <laughs> I'd love to thank, just around the corner, in Preston, Victoria, oh, Lucy Harrison. Great name. Lucy That's a fantastic Harrison. Name. Great what? name. Uh, I haven't had a go at one of these. Let me think. Uh, what about a an animatronic fish? Oh, great. You get in it, it's got legs. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Uh, okay, great. Love it. What are you laughing at? What? What's funny about that? I forgot we were naming modes of transport for a second, and then it came back to me, and I went, oh, of course, sorry. How stupid of me. An animatronic fish. Yeah, so it can it can swim like a submarine, but also it's got legs that come out and can walk on land. So handy yeah, for Melbourne. Really Would you handy. Know? <laughs> That's the least dumb submarine you've ever heard of, Jess. Yeah, definitely, because it at least looks like a fish. So if, if Submarines so- are so dumb. But if an animatronic fish, that's that not makes dumb. sense. Yeah. If someone tried to 
chuck you, Lucy, in the Yarra, in your animatronic fish. You just walk your way back out of yeah, it. Yeah, and you go, oi. Oi, don't do that. Don't do that. That's a, no, don't Fear tomfoolery, respect. thanks. Come on. Let's not fuck around around I'm water. I'm just a gal and a fish. Okay. Okay. Just trying to get to work Please. via the Yarra River. And then you swish your scarf around your neck. <laughs> and you're on, and you're on your, your way. way. And uh, so thank you to Lucy. And I would also like to thank from York in Yorkshire. That makes sense. Mike Ollis. Mike Ollis. Mike Ollis. We were told Viking. that York's quite posh. Posh. And but that's it's Vikings why... as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think Mike has a seaplane. Oh. Oh, I love a sea. They look cool to me. No, you're not into it? I've been in one. Oh, they kind of I scary? nearly threw up. Why were you in a seaplane? Well, I'd gone on a jet ski tour in Queensland somewhere. Sounds That sounds fun so far. Yeah, yeah that was fun. And we stopped at this tiny little island uh, and we are just having a little bit of a break and a seaplane pilot was just chatting to our tour instructor and had some spare time and said, do you guys want to come up for a joyride? And we did. And How many people get in the seaplane? There's four, only four of us. And we did. And then he said, now, do you want to take the easy way up or the express elevator? And I said, easy way. And everyone else said, express. What are they thinking? So we were like <laughs> completely vertical oh, going straight fun. up. Like a rocket. And then you had to like... Like as you lurch back, as he <laughs> evens out again, you're like. Ugh. It feels like the kind of thing that the uh, whoever wants the lowest end wins. You know Surely. what I mean? Like that's not a majority rules. I don't want to do this. Well, bad luck. You've been yeah. outvoted. As someone with a weak stomach, I uh, I don't I like. Hope you spewed on him. I nearly spewed. I don't like that kind of bullying. Where it's sort of like, oh, you don't like this. Now we're going to force you to do it. I'm like, yeah. why? That's not very nice. Anyway, I felt quite sick for You wouldn't do that, would you, today. Mike? Now that you no, drive, not our good man, Mike Hollis. Mike, Mike Hollis. is a is a beautiful. Because he's pilot. a, it's also a Viking place. I picture out the side. They've got those oars. Of course. You know those old school Viking ships at the side of a seaplane. Yeah. So you can do both. Yeah, perfect. You can fly, and then you pull the oars in. Yeah. Uh, but if you're on the sea, then you can oar oar the boat around. Perfect. Either or. Sort of thing. Nah. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Right on. Well, from Mike Ollis to Ellis Wells, oh. I would like to thank Ellis Wells oh. from London. Thank you, London. Ellis. Ellis Wells. Ellis to Ellis. That's great. The only Ellis I know is Hans Booby. What about Sophie Ellis Baxter? What oh. about Warren Ellis from The Bad Seeds? Oh, okay. You dickhead. Oh, Hans Booby. Yeah, oh, the only real one know, funny. The only one I know personally. <laughs> Oh, Alice. I got on you, Alice Wells. Appreciate that. I'm thinking, I'm pretty sure that's his name. Double L's in both names. Mm. E double L in both names. E double L and an S in both names. Whoa, Alice Wells. You got lol. From London. And Alice, what's he using to travel, Matt? Well, I think it's just because his name sounds like uh, Swells. I'm thinking um, like a surfboard. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. But it's a double decker. Mm-hmm. And it's got um, it's a double decker surfboard. Yes, double decker surfboard <laughs> with is it um, business catering. up top pleasure down yeah, below. Yeah, business <laughs> up top. You got catering lounge <laughs> downstairs where you know the surfer is who's powering the yeah, vessel. Right. Was he, is he paddling or still standing? <laughs> no, no, he's just surfing. Right. So you got uh, Mark Ocalupo. Oki's down there. <laughs> okay. And he's powering the surfboard, and Ellis Wells is up top, dining away, living like a bloody wow. king, like a surfboard throne. Yeah. Good on you, Alice Wells. Taking it for a spin around London's beautiful beaches. <laughs> <laughs> Sucked in London. No, you're great. Uh, good on you, Alice Wells. Appreciate your support. And finally, I'd like to thank from Circe, Arkansas. Circe. 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 <laughs> Sorry to Plan Molly. She. Plan. I love you. Half and fresh. <laughs> I love you, Molly Harden from CSC Arkansas. Thank you so much for your support over the Molly. months and Molly's the years. Molly's a great name. Molly's a great name. Such a good name. Oh, these, this is a, another fantastic bunch of names. And Molly, Molly gets around in one of those horse-drawn carriages. That, uh, a through... horse drew this carriage? <laughs> Will it be structurally sound? <laughs> Like a clippity it's cloppers. a smart horse. Okay. Come on, mate. Smart horse. There's a lot of horses that are smarter than us. But also it pulls the cart around 
Huh. And it's all fancy this like horse in can the do city. It all. You know There's the ones of, in the city? Oh, a lot of horses yeah. are stronger than us too. Really? Yeah. Bloody hell. Stronger than me. Good on you, Molly. Taking your uh, your horse and cart for a run around CC Arkansas. And um, it's obviously, it's not one of these normal city ones that are kind of a bit cruel to the animals. These ones would be, the horses love it. Oh, my God. The <laughs> horses, horse every day it. the horses are knocking on her wind bedroom window like, can we go, please? I'm glad their son is... Um, Phase them out from some of the big cities, aren't they? I think London might have cut them, cut the horses. Yeah, it's, not, it's all about <laughs> double decker, double decker surfboards these days. Yeah, yeah, well, much more London, down the Thames in London. Really. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Molly Harden, yeah, clippity clop. There's nothing more romantic than that. Bit of snow. Name falling. something more romantic. You can't. Um, no, bl- you can't. A big jar of. Peanut butter. Oh, oh, that is sexy. You can do anything you want with that peanut anything. butter. Oh, and I mean I'm, anything. I'm instantly hungry for peanut butter. I'm always hungry for peanut butter. Yeah, it's always going on just below the surface. Yeah, I was thinking the other day as I was eating peanut butter with a spoon straight from the jar, I thought, how many spoonfuls of peanut butter is depression? You know? <laughs> like, a, did, what? You, did you get to the bottom of that? No. Jar? Yes. No? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks to everyone that supports the show on Patreon. You make a little world go round. Matt, are we, do we need to... Let induct anyone to the Trip Ditch Club. If anyone's made it into the Trip Ditch Club that are pe- this week. That's people that have supported the show non-stop at a certain level, the shout-out level for three-plus years. There are. We do have three inductees. Oh, my, let me roll out the red carpet. And, Dave, of course, you are going to engrave these into a page on the website. <laughs> I will yeah. engrave them onto my computer screen and then take a photo and put it on Instagram. It feels like the kind of thing you could... You're very stubbornly not doing this. It feels like something you would quite easily be able to manage. I think, I, why don't you do it? Because this is your birthright. <laughs> is it not? I don't want to take that away from you. And also, I don't know how to do it. I know that you know how to do it. I don't know how. I'd have to research how to do it. <laughs> the one thing you love most is research. Yeah, but fun things. Oh, okay. I or would... murders. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to thank from Mastic Beach, or sorry, not thank, but induct from Mastic Beach, New York, Kevin J. Rate. Thanks, Kev. From Claremont, Western Australia, Ruth Gatlodding. On you, Ruth. And from <laughs> Surbiton, Great Britain, Rosemary Lynch. Give Cheer it up for Rosemary. Your Rosemary. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Rosemary, do it for me. I mean, I'll do it for you. Ah, it's both weird. <laughs> Thanks for your support. Sorry Amazing. about that. If I just, Please don't leave. If I just cut through your support yeah, for sure. with one weird phrase, it's sorry. still a very exclusive club. Less than 50 people in there. Wow. That's uh, awesome. And it's it's a real uh, real honour for you, for us to have you in there. Imagine if any of them ever leave us. <laughs> There's a obviously Imagine. champagne on arrival. <laughs> oh, absolutely! Canapes, canapes, whichever way you want to say. It. Canapes. I think everyone says fuck canapes. Who the says canapes? They don't say canapes. <laughs> <It's one. laughs> no, everyone says canapes. <laughs> I went to <laughs> I went to Big Doggy when I mispronounced it. <laughs> so <And> good. I, <laughs> that was not on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, everyone says canopies. <laughs> all right, we've all been camping. My mum, my mum was once at a, a, a function where someone offered her a canape, and we, <laughs> I've laughed about that for many years. And now that's even funny though. Would you like a canopy? A canopy? Anyone for a canopy? A canopy? Anyone? <laughs> Am I saying that right? Am I saying that right? <laughs> Well, that pretty much brings us to the end of the episode. Thanks to all our patrons. You can get on at patreon.com slash do go on pod. And there's heaps of different rewards. <laughs> Jess has just rebooted the newsletter. So every Sunday slash Monday, depending on where you are in the world, you'll get a weekly update. And we've got fun things to announce soon, which I think yeah. Jess will be putting out on next week's uh, thing. There's still works in progress on our uh, YouTube channel type things. Now, some other, we've got a new uh, stretch goal which we're going to announce, which uh, mm. certain people of a certain uh, movie star fame might be <laughs> interested in. Someone who's got a, got a bar and he doesn't mind phrasing it. <laughs> Have I said too much? I think I've pretty much said it now, haven't I? That's right. If we raise enough money, we will fly and we will have dinner with Russell Crowe. <laughs> and we're looking forward to it. Yeah. We'll record the conversation. So Yeah. Yeah. He's already a fan of my work. Remember that time he retweeted my video? Amazing. Best moment of my life. <laughs> Me too. 
complained to us. And uh, the worst moment of our lives when Greg Norman failed to reply. <laughs> yeah. Greg Norman, you <laughs> dog, God. you sick dog. The highs and lows of life. Uh, but still, we might be able to talk about Greg Norman later this month on a Patreon only episode. That's exciting. Please. Yes, but uh, so, and other things you can vote on topics. Two out of three, basically, <laughs> of the episodes we do have been voted on by Patreons. Anyone can suggest a topic, though, which is via the link in the show notes. Uh, That's right. We look forward. If you can think of any crazy, fun, wacky, weird stories that not many people know about, or you think we just don't know about it over here in Australia, f- tell us about it, and we'll probably do a report on it. Yeah, it definitely helps how you how you write that little pitch, and if you have some good. Um, sources to start off with that's definitely put probably mm. put you ahead of the mm. head of the curve mm. um for getting picked out as well um and yeah what what other some of the other bonuses we get at the moment we do two bonus episodes per month this month we're doing three because we got um fucked by technology last <laughs> month you also I, get like um pre-sales on all of our shows and uh, you get information first and stuff like and that and yeah there's a facebook group for patrons yeah. only so there's a whole heap of stuff uh, so get involved if you want to. And why would you not want to? Yeah. Get in there. That's patreon.com slash do go on pod. Anything else we need to say? We're doing festival shows. We didn't mention that this week. Yeah, that's right. We are coming up to the Melbourne Comedy Festival for our fourth annual year. And it's going to be... Uh, fourth annual year? Yeah. We're uh, doing years annually now. Yeah. Our fourth <laughs> I a- just said annually wrong. <laughs> I can't zing Stop in. talking, I reckon. <laughs> Yeah. We're just doing four shows. It's going to be really fun. And uh, tickets are on sale. And the first one especially is really selling well. And you can get in at comedyfestival.com.au where tickets are also on sale for Matt's stand-up show and Jess's stand-up show. Yes. Mattsstewartcomedy.com and jessperkins.com.au. Nailed it. Now, I think we Dave, should get out of say here. goodbye. We should this, get I just saw it. This does not feel like a two-hour episode. Yeah, it's been a long, it's been a long, long time. Been a long, 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 pod. Come on. <laughs> I was referencing Led Zeppelin. Girl, that one I want to make you. Oh. Yeah. Oh, every time. <laughs> uh, thanks so much for listening to the show. We'll be back next week with another episode. But until then, I'll say thank you and goodbye. Later. Bye. Sorry. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.